What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the War of the Spark uh, set review that uh, Rob and I are going to do. We do these regularly whenever there's a new set, and uh, I haven't actually looked through all of the the cards from this set. So, so uh, this is natural for you. This is this is we're getting it off the cuff. It's going to be real. Yeah. So it's going to be yeah. These are my first look. Uh, like this is Johnny's Pride card. I've never seen this one before. So no, this me is, neither. This is all new to me. Mm -mm. Except for the, I've seen the art. Haven't seen anything else. On what the kind card. of mics do you use? These are just regular <clears throat> Sure SM7Bs. These are pretty much industry standard mics. So yeah. Um, and this is an industry standard Rob over here. Oh. Um, a Johnny's Pride mate, one and a white, two two. Whenever you gain a life, put a one one <clears throat> counter on it. We all know what this guy does. We don't have to. Uh, we don't have to go over this guy. I love the art though. That's a huge cat. Yeah, this is good art. I would probably use this over the other Johnny's Pride Mates art. Pride Mate art. Oh, can you? I bet you that in foil, this card looks sick too. That that yellow's gonna pop. And it's, I love, I love the fact that he's like tearing down a whole army by himself. That's always funny when people say that to me because I'm like, I don't know. Uh, I never think about it in that. You know, people are like that probably looks pretty sweet in foil. I never think about it in that. In that I don't context. feel like I say that a lot. Like I don't look. No, I don't for think that, you do. Per but se. because the color but pops, I do, people I, say that sometimes. So yeah. like, I think this will look, this will look sweet in foil. And I'm like, it's interesting because I never look at that. Wow, that was good. We did the first card pretty well. Let's keep it going. Only all right. Only uh, only if I'm here with you. Two hundred forty nine left. Oh dang it! Okay. Battlefield promotion one and a white. Put a one one counter on target creature. That creature gains first strike until end of turn. You gain two life. Limited fodder. Sweet trick. Two, I do like it because it does a lot though. Putting a counter on something, giving it first strike and gaining two. Like that's a lot of things. This I is agree. doing a lot of things, and mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. No one's playing this in constructed. Yep. Bond of Discipline. Five mana. Ooh, you're losing me here already. <laughs> Tap all creatures your opponent's control. Creatures you control gain <clears throat> lifelink until end of turn. Not terrible. It's just a... It's, it, I mean, that, that can just win a game in Limited. Yeah, this is like... If you guys creature. have ever played Sleep in Limited, like, this is this feels very similar. Like, instead of tapping them for two turns, you're tapping them for one turn and then gaining the life equivalent of all your creatures. So you're like, okay, I'll gain 15. And, uh, you know, all your guys are tapped. So usually if you're not winning on that one swing... You should have enough life to survive whatever they do. But again, we're not playing. We're not going to sleep that no. out in our sixties. No, nope. seventy-five. Whatever. Nope. Bulwark Giant, six mana, a three-six. Whenever it enters the when it enters the battlefield, I said whenever, like it's going to do it. It's going to do it multiple times. Whenever. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain five life. Okay. Good times. Good times. Oh. I didn't see this. You didn't see Charm Stray? No. Wow, you got real excited real fast. You're like, well, it's a cat. Uh, one mana for a 1-1 one, one with lifelink. Cats always have lifelink. That's interesting. When Charm Stray enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each other creature you control named Charm Stray. This card is awesome. Oh, here he goes. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's playable, but that's, that's I don't think it's playable. Cool. That's super cool. That's cool design. <laughs> that reminds me of Fairy Miscreant. It does have a fairy miscreant feel where like each one uh Yeah. Each one benefits the others. That's pretty cool. I like that card. I mean, I don't think it's any good, but I'm trying to Cats should all have death touch. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to just uh fix the I feel like we're a little uh what's it called? What's where I'm looking? White. Yeah, I feel like we're a little now we're Oh red. no, that's worse. Now we're sunburned. Now we look like the cats. Oh man, this is Yeah, we're gonna put the uh, white balance on the white. Oh, man, it's a Cats should have protection from lizard and bugs. Cats should have menace. That's a good one. <clears throat> okay, that could work if we can up. I that. yeah, but look at me though. I'm super super dark. But that's just your that's just your that's just natural. Oh. Well, guys, I think the mushrooms just kicked in. All right. Mm. Good morning, happy Easter. I think that might be a little better, just because it doesn't look as blown out. Your stream did. All right, we'll leave it like that. <clears throat> anyway, Charm Stray. It's a cutie. What can you do? Uh, Defiant Strike. Target creature gets plus one, a plus O. Oh. This cat is worthless. Wow, that's rough. <laughs> uh, one O oh and draw a card. The draw a card's nice. This is a reprint. You know that, right? Yeah, it was. It's That, that card's going to be standard playable. Oh, yeah, it's playable. from Cons of Tarkir, isn't it? It's going to be standard playable. That's going to be played in standard. Which one? The one we just really saw. yeah Defiant strike. I mean, if there's like a heroic deck, maybe. But... Have you seen Have you seen the the feather, the bird? Oh sure, sure, sure. Yeah, okay. It draws you card. That card's great. Have you seen this cool? Uh, what? Uh, you know what? I was just making funny. Okay. Divine arrow, two mana. It deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. 
Like, this is just Gideon's Reproach, right? Like, I mean, it's just worse than... Is Reproach three damage or four? It's four. Okay. But so you also same. have Summary Judgment, which deals five, so... Yeah. I don't know. Like, there's a bunch of stuff like this. Honestly, Stream, why do you go Why do you go by Rob and not Bert? It's <laughs> a good question. If you have to ask that, you probably already know the answer. I don't know the answer. <laughs> it's because Bert sounds terrible. And to be fair, I actually don't go by... No one calls me Rob. Apologies in advance for all the Berts in the chat. Uh, I don't really uh, think Rob was thinking through his answer. It's very <laughs> offensive to Berts. Enforcer Griffin, five mana for a 3-4 flyer. That's like a... Nope, don't, don't even... None, nope, it's like nothing. <laughs> Finale of Glory. This is actually a cycle. There's one of these in each color. They're all mythics. Uh, so we have X white white for a sorcery. Creates X two two white soldier tokens with vigilance. So for seven mana, you're going to get five, five soldiers with vigilance. If X is ten or more. So if you're spending 12 mana on this. Also create X four four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. Did you say ten mana? Yeah. Yeah. If well, X is well, ten or more. So this is 12. 12. That's yeah. what I said. Not going to happen. Right. So like. The thing that gets me is it's a sorcery. If this is an instant, you could do the same on the turn. It'd be utterly bonkers. There's other there's other cards win. that have this function. That, uh, that are White Sun speed. Zenith is instant speed. Well, no, I mean in standard already. Like what? Like you have March of the Multitudes. That's true. You have you also have the 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 one of the uh, the dual color cards that creates three two twos with vigilance. That's instant speed. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, assemble. Like, like yeah. Yeah. This I mean this is just my problem with this is like you spend twelve mana and they're like you also create. Uh, X four four. I'm like, if you're creating ten two twos, you don't also need to create ten four fours, right? Right? Because like at that point, you're already winning. So you're either hoping to untap and keep these creatures, or you're not. The card isn't bad. I just think the the bonus ability isn't really much of a bonus. It's just, it's like this is the epitome of win more. Yeah. Instead of getting twenty power, you'll get sixty power, and you're like, Whoa. but I don't. Uh, the twenty was good enough. <laughs> I'm playing a white deck. Like th this, they're probably not at twenty. <clears throat> Right, like the, like you're just trying to avoid a wrath when you do this. Well, like whether you're doing it for nine or whether you're doing it for ten, like you're trying to avoid a wrath. So yeah. that card's not that good. This card, this card's interesting. Yeah, interesting. This has got this is one of the best cards in the entire set. This what? card busted. Gideon Black Blade. You guys can pre-order these. You can you can pre-order all these from uh, CoolStuff.com, CoolStuffInc.com, and if you use promo code Frank Five, you will get five percent off. So I was gonna say, did you hear that? I was gonna say twenty. Um, Five. I guess. Getting, I think he was like seventeen ninety nine last. That would, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. And I think Bolus was like thirty. Ooh. The Thir Sniff Miss is getting no love though. <laughs> Gideon Blackblade, three mana, one white white for a four loyalty planeswalker. As long as it's your turn, Gideon Blackblade is a four four human soldier creature with indestructible. That's still a planeswalker. So it's on your turn. This dude is always a planeswalker. He's always indestructible, and he will always prevent all damage to it. So that's hard to deal with. Uh, I guess they can go to their turn and then Oblivion Ring or something. Uh, plus one, up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible. I think it's funny that you can't give him Lifelink. You know, like, I, I don't help myself. I help others. Negative six, exile a non-land permanent. If you could do that to him, he's already busted as is, right? So all the old Gideons, which were good anyways, you had to choose on your turn whether you wanted his ability or you wanted to attack with him as a 4-4. This card lets you do both. This card is just That's dumb. That's true. That's this card point. is just dumb. This this is literally a... This is like taking a busted creature, a 4-4 creature, that you basically can't kill has to be exiled for three mana and he's buffing your dude. Oh, don't this, get me wrong. I'm not saying it's bad. I was yeah. just I was just commenting on the fact that you can't use his ability on himself. I, I that's wasn't what, strictly that's saying it to you. the commentary I was making. Yeah, I wasn't saying it to you directly either. I'm just saying, like, this card is just dumb. The this, only thing I don't like about it is it's kind of narrow. Like, the negative six is great, but, like, you're not going to be able to use, like, you play him, he goes to five. Then he goes to six. Then you get to exile thing, but you're also trading for him. So then he goes to seven. You probably want to go to seven. Like, but if you're playing him on three on curve, like the six probably becomes irrelevant at that point. If you're playing him on three on curve, like you're playing him on three, and then your opponent literally gets to untap and like any removal kills him, right? No, because he's not. No, a creature, he's a planeswalker. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. true. Like they have him. to contempt him. They have to contempt him. I can just attack him. But look at it. He's 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 five loyalty on your next turn on your next untap. He's at five. That's stupid. Yeah, it's not bad. This card's For really three, man, good. It's not bad. Just burn him out. Sure. That means that means you cast the Black Blade, you already attack with Lifelink, or you traded a creature because you attack with an indestructible, and then they spent two burn spells to burn him out. Like that's that's just you you lost that game because you did that. How is getting able to exile? Did he learn a new trick? That's a good question. <laughs> that's uh well he could destroy creatures. 
I guess that's yeah, but that's not really the same. I guess that card's great though. That Gideon's sacrifice one white. Choose a creature or planeswalker you control. I will choose Rob. Uh, all damage that will be dealt this turn to you and permanents you control by Rob, or is dealt to <laughs> Rob instead rather, if Rob's on the battlefield. Um, it's a cute trick, but I mean, this cards like this are always they're usually too hard to get to to do exactly what you it's want. So linear. I feel like you're you're holding cards like this in your hand the entire game, and you're like one of these. There's gonna be a situation, and I'm gonna just blow everybody out, and, and it, it never just comes. never happens, dude. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Gideon's Triumph, two mana. It's funny that they have Gideon's Triumph, Gideon's Sacrifice, but they have another card called like Divine Whatever, which is literally Gideon's Reproach. Like, just put Gideon's Reproach in here, dude. Just have all three Gideon cards. Target opponent sacrifices a creature that attacked or blocked this turn. This is very white uh, ability. This is Celestial Purge, I believe. No, not Purge. Celestial Blessed Alliance. No. Sacrifice target, target or block, attacking or blocking creature. What's that? What's that? Celestial flare? Wing shards. It's still not that. If you control a Gideon, that player sacrifices two creatures instead. That's not bad, because like especially if you're playing the three mana Gideon, you're just like, well, I'll sack two guys. But there, there's a key word that's on... There's there's text on this card that's different from any of these cards that we've ever seen before that makes this card strictly better. I'm waiting. It says target opponent sacrifices a creature that attacked... Or blocked this turn. Oh, that's so nice. So you can, you can do, do it instead. outside of combat. Oh, that's nice. This card is sick. As soon as I saw that. Oh, that's really good because you're yes. not limited to using it during combat. Yep. So you can keep your counter spell up. Yep. And then EOT if they don't play anything. Yep. Then Just you can blast blast both their that's dudes. That's cool. I like that a lot. Yep. That, that makes this card very very good. Yep. Nice nice looking out there. Mm -hmm. Nice looking out there. Good catch, Bert. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh. God Eternal Oketra. five mana. For a 3-6 legendary creature zombie god. Uh, all of these creatures scare me. Why? Because I don't know how to deal with them. You exile them. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, you're right. I just realized that. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what I mean. Like, you're literally like, I don't, I don't know you how to deal with them. You steal them. Double strike for a 3-6. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 four, four black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. See you later, Kadeen. This card's really, really good, but just even though it's got a super strong ability, it's it's expensive. It's a six-six. It's basically a six-six for five mana. I, yeah, I agree with that. That makes four fours whenever you just cast creatures. Yeah, but I mean, and, and it's a pain to get rid of. So, okay. So have you have you named a negative aspect of this card yet? It's just expensive. It's it's five mana five in mana? a deck in a deck where what deck? That's my point. Like, what deck are you playing where you're going to untap this and play like two or three creatures? I don't think we know. Though. I don't think you can say though. I'm just guessing. Even if you play one creature, well, I would never play two creatures after I cast this because I don't have to. I'd play one creature and then I have a, a six six, a four four, and whatever I cast. That's right. You would. And then if they kill those creatures, I'll just play another creature and then I have two more. Like this, uh, binding puts an exile. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So whenever God okay, Eternal Oketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. This These, these cards make counter spells very, very good uh, because they're not on the battlefield. Dumb question here because I knew Sacrifice had different uh, wording when it came to like regenerating stuff. Does Sacrifice count as dying? Yeah, every, anytime okay. a creature goes to the graveyard from the battlefield, it dies. Okay, all right. Binding Prince for me casting. No, it would not because it's not under it. Right, but it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not under, under it. it. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Is that how that works? Yeah, that wouldn't. That wouldn't work. Ixalan's binding. Well, yeah, but if I look for binding, oh. it's just gonna show up. Uh, when enters battlefield, exile target online permanent. Oh yeah, it says because because your your opponents can't cast spells with the with the same name as the exiled card. But there is no exiled card. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It's not gonna. It's not gonna do anything. I don't know. That's weird because the way it's worded is it said. Go back to that real quick. It says you, or is put into exile. That means it is exiled. It's put into exile. You may put it into its owner's library through from the top. So it, if it's put in exile, you just effect. put it in your library. Okay. What's well, not a replacement effect? It's just giving you a trigger. Okay. All right. What's confusing? What's I I I can see. I can understand why you why you may think it would it wouldn't work or what it wouldn't would, work? binding would work. But I, but I, I mean, I would lean towards your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the, the exiled card. There is no, no card exiled card. It. Yeah, yeah. There is no card exiled. It's in your library. Grateful apparition, one and a white for a one-one flyer when it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker proliferate. This is actually this is just thrumming bird, right? Thrum, yeah. And it also and it's also probably really good in this in limited, right? Especially with all the two mana evasive dude. Yeah. By the way, they should have been doing a fist bump. Who you? Oh yeah, right on there. Kaya and the apparition. Probably yeah. Who do you think the apparition is? Her mom? 
Her dad? Uh, it looks like, um, what's her name from, from Frozen? Elsa? Elsa. Okay. okay. I've never seen Frozen, so. You should watch it. It's pretty good. I, uh, I've heard that. I, uh... That's the Lion King. <laughs> what was it? Ignite the beacon, five mana, search a library for up to two Planeswalker cards, reel them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your library. Uh, this card I like a lot, actually. Uh, I wrote about this card uh, for Cool Stuff Inc. in an article about two weeks ago. And uh, the fact that this is an instant is very strong. If this was just a five mana card, you play it on your main step, you get two Planeswalkers, yeah, and then you pass. Absolutely terrible. Pretty bad. But in any control deck, you can just literally keep this up, keep Counterspell up, keep Removal up, whatever you want to do. And then, like, you're drawing two cards, but the two cards are any two Planeswalkers in your deck. You can get a Gideon and a Jace. You can get a Nicol Bolas. Um, you know, I mean, like, there's a lot of things... Uh, that you can get with this card, and it's it's pretty sweet. When you say it like that, it is, that, that I can actually see that it's that it's not not that bad. But I mean, I just it's finding the deck that has the balance of planeswalkers and removal spells in order to get to five mana to be able to cast this, and then untap, cast something, and protect it. Donnan said, "If your bacon ignites, you're frying it too hard," and I think that's probably true. Yeah, uh -huh. you don't want your bacon to ignite. I like my ba my bacon um, soft. You like the flash? I don't like crispy. You like the flash of oh, bacon. God. So not, not anymore. Look at a card like uh, Jace's Ingenuity, right? Five mana, you're drawing three. Mm -hmm. This is five mana, you're drawing two. Right, it's better. You're choosing. But you're guaranteed to get pl two planes. It's a tutor. It's, it's an instant oh, speed it's, tutor. It for sure like, is a tutor. Yeah, it's a tutor. But, I mean, and you're getting two of the strongest card types in the game. Yeah. I think this card's good. Two five for four mana. He he protect. He does protect. He 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 protect. That's all, he, that's all he does, really. Law Rune Enforcer, one, two for one. Tap target creature with converted mana cost two or greater. This taps most creatures. This is actually really good because um, there's generally, in every like every other set, there's always a card in limited that does this. Every, yes. Every few sets. But the fact that they put that tiny little cost on it, I mean, it may be irrelevant. What cost? The, because instead of just saying, you know, pay oh, X and tap a creature, a restriction. Restriction, yeah. restriction right. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, they always have cost. There's no, always one in a tap. Yeah, that makes more sense then. May, it may or may not be relevant. On its face, it really doesn't look relevant, right? I mean, are you really worried about one drop? No, not at all. That's yeah. my point. Like, this this card taps basically everything you care about. Mm -hmm. And it's also a 1-2 instead of a 1-1, one, one, which is definitely worth it. This card's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I don't think it's a great constructed play, but as far no. as limited goes, it does stand out. Yep. Loxodon Sergeant. Four, four, a 3-3 three, three for 4 with Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control gain Vigilance until end of turn. I like this card. Good for him. Good good limited. He's doing, he's doing good. He's mm -hmm. doing the Lord's work. Makeshift Battalion, three mana for a three-two. When it enters, the, when it when it and at least what, two other creatures attack, you put a one-one counter on Makeshift Battalion. So that's you, a good card. So you might say this card has Battalion. It hmm. does. That's interesting. That's a good card, though. That's the ability, right? That's what it's called, right? There was a ability called Battalion. Yeah. When you attack with three creatures? No. Was oh yeah, it was. Yeah, that's the one that's, that's on the, the Goblin, the one-one first strike that gives all yeah, your yeah Legion Loyalist, right? Yeah. Like Battalion is the name of the ability, right? Is it called Battalion now that I'm thinking about it? I don't know. It's probably not. I'm probably. Let's find out. I'm probably stupid. Yeah, it's battalion. Yeah, it's battalion. You're not stupid at yeah, all. Yeah, it's literally called makeshift battalion, you're and the, it has battalion on it. You're the that's smartest hilarious. of smarts. It's hilarious. Oh, you can't tap the tokens. That's why. For yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys can tell they're coming from law rune enforcer. Can't tap uh, zombie armies. That's interesting. Ah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a there relevant. There it is. Uh, that's it. That's the that's the martyr for the. Either way, this card's. It's it's that's actually a good card in limited. It, oh, it's fine in limited. You're yeah. always gonna play a three. You're you're very frequently, not always. You're very frequently gonna play a three two for two for three. Yeah. And if it has an ability to make itself bigger, it's even better. When this dies, proliferate. It's a two two for two. I mean, you're not good playing it constructed, but yeah, proliferating in limited seems like it's gonna be pretty strong. This card is very strange, and based on the card alone, I feel like it should be mythic, just because it's like everything. It's just a big fat like win the game card. Eight mana, six white white for a vehicle. Uh, it, this is like the most battle cruiser magic I've ever seen. <laughs> it's a legendary artifact vehicle, 5-5. Five, five, flying, first strike, and vigilance. Whenever it attacks, create two 4-4 four, four angel creatures with flying and vigilance that are attacking. So if you get eight mana and you have four total power on board to crew this thing, uh, I mean, you're probably already attacks winning. For 13. You're att attacks for 13. Yeah, that's this is flying pretty... Strike this card's ones. pretty nuts. The, if, if, uh, if the weather light was 20th century... Then the Parhelion too. You was, think this is 20th century, 20th century Weatherlight? We're 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 in like twenty seven twelve right now. This thing this looks thing futuristic, yeah. Yeah. This is like uh, it's so un, non aerodynamic that this it's is just, like the shield hel helicarrier, right? Actually, that's a good description I mean, of this it. This is this is what you. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Is win like. more keyword ability in this set? Yeah, it's on this card. <laughs> it was also on the other white card. Pouncing links. I mean. It, 
this is a card in my in my wildest dreams it would see constructed play, but in my in my wildest realities, in my tamest realities, it does not. You know what I mean? Even in your wildest realities, it's not going to see play. Um. So yeah, in no reality, I think this is going to see play. Like eight <clears throat> mana is just too much for a card that does not impact the board for an artifact that you can literally abrade if that was legal and standard but you guys know what i'm saying and then also a card you already need four power on board to crew like that's just too much work you're asking you're asking for a lot here um yeah i, I like parhelion it, but... 2 electric boogaloo <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, why is it, what happened to the first parhelion is that a good tinker target i feel like we could be doing better <laughs> right because i'm like all right it's tinkered for it as soon as I get four power and creatures, we're good to go. Yeah, dead. <laughs> as long as it's your turn, Pouncing, Pouncing Lynx has first strike. We've seen that before. Good for him. Yep. Prison Realm, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, exile a creature or planeswalker and opponent controls until it leaves. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. This card's great. No, this card is really good. This card is a great In the standard upgrade format. to like. It's an upgrade to Journey to Nowhere. It's a nice balance between like Oblivion Ring and Journey to Nowhere. Like you can't hit enchantments or artifacts, obviously, but like. The scry is relevant. Being able to be relevant. a removal spell for a creature that also can hit planeswalkers, like those are the two most oppressive creature types. So I think it's it's pretty good when it's, you can. It's hit both it's of a those. card you can include in your main deck that isn't dead, doesn't have a dead matchup, right? Because against the control matchups where they probably have zero creatures, game one, it's always going to have targets still. I think this card's great, and the scry is just like they're like, you know what? Give them scry. Let them scry one. Thing good. Rally of Wings. Untap all creatures you control. Creatures you control with flying get plus two, plus two until end of turn. That's that's a straight blowout limited, but it also is a super good ramp. Well, I don't want to say ramp, but like super good. Um, makes me think of the enchantment that costs two that gives all your creatures plus one, plus one. So if like you build a deck like around that, around flyers and limited, like this card is just really good. It's like a favorable win combat yeah, trick. Yeah. It's not bad. I mean, if there's a favorable wins deck, like you just put this in there because favorable favorable one, wins one. is in standard too, right? Mm -hmm. So, Ravnica at War. This card's sick. Exile all multicolor permanents for mana. This is a card. This is the kind of card where I'm just like, I don't know how I feel about this because, like, in in certain situations you're like this is great, in other situations you're like this is terrible. I mean, it's a sideboard card. I I think it could see constructed playability because. All the so many of the new planeswalkers are dual colored. I mean, I, I think that this is a card that could see play. Hits Teferi. Um, God, I can't think of any. This nickel bullet, this little tail, this little bottom of the wing here. You see it? Yeah. It looks like it's making the card a thought bubble, like a word bubble. You see it? Like this is like the bottom that where it's like coming oh, down. Oh yes, like, yeah, I see what you're saying. Anyway, like. I don't know. This is a, it's obviously a sideboard card. Like I, I don't think I can't see anyone playing this in their main deck and just no, hoping never. that your opponents have a bunch nope. of. <clears throat> but uh, it reminds me of Solar. Is it Solar Flare? I don't know. Solar Burst. Whatever the. We'll get to it. It's it's coming up. It reminds me of that in the sense that like there's certain matchups where this is going to be a blowout and certain matchups where you just don't hit anything. Urza's is Ruin Ruinous Blast. No, the new one, the red white one that deals damage equal to the power. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out together. You could read my article. Unbelievable. Oh, you're talking about the new one from the set. Yes. Yeah, it costs, I think it costs four mana. Yeah. And it does... It's a I four mana it does, sweeper. Yeah, and it does... Doesn't it do like two plus something? I, I know what you're talking about. Let's, we'll get No, there. it deals damage equal to... The, each creature deals damage to their power to themselves. Oh, yes. It's the... Yes. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. It's a giant justice strike. Rising Populous. Three mana. Whenever another creature or planeswalker you control dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Rising Populous. I mean, this is just Unruly Mob, right? Mm -hmm. Except it hits Planeswalkers now, so they added a mana to it. Ooh. I think you could have still left this at two mana. I think it still would have been fine. The the, the number of times where a Planeswalker uh, is going to add a counter to this is so, so minimal that I don't think adding the extra... I guess it's also a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-1, one -one, but yeah. whatever. Still affected by the Abrade Syndrome. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. Single combat. This is what Rob and I uh, do. Uh, five mana. Each player chooses a creature or planeswalker they control, then sacrifices the rest. Players can't cast creature or planeswalker spells until the end of your next turn. So I play this on my turn. Until the end of my next turn, uh, play, I can't cast them and they can't cast them. Which is interesting because I'll play this on, let's say I'll play this on my turn four. My opponent on their turn four can't cast it. On my turn five, I can't cast it. But on their on turn, five. they can on it's... their five. So they're still getting to play things before you are. Yeah, I don't like this card. Which is interesting. And especially, like, being able to keep, like, one creature and one planeswalker is pretty good. 
I mean, this card really doesn't make sense to me because so let's think about it. Let's say we each have, I have two planeswalkers and two creatures. You have two planeswalkers and two creatures. I'm still coming out. Yeah, you're coming out ahead. I'm losing three cards. You're losing two cards. Yeah, that yeah. Just, and you're you get to keep like you, like letting your and opponent you're choosing keep their, what you keep. You're yeah, you're ahead, you're ahead to begin with, or you're not. Like you're keeping the best planeswalker and the best creature that you have, and it's just like, I don't know. It's a little scary. Like the the proposition is scary. Uh -huh. Like I don't want them to. I don't like it's it's like the Punisher mechanic where they get to choose their the best option. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just don't want them to do that. Sunblade Angel, six mana for a three three. Well, you're you're probably a lot of keywords. Yeah, you're losing me here. Flying first strike, strike vigilance, lifelink. There's a lot of things. Yeah, but it's junk. Wait, or chooses a creature or planeswalker they control. Hmm. Okay. Still though, like you're still keeping one or the other. Sure, you got one instead I mean, of two. The only way this card is good is if you're playing like versus White Weenie and they got ten they got ten dudes on board. Like everyone in the chat is just spamming or. <laughs> or I mean, I don't know, like it's not good. It makes it better, but I still don't love it. Because also, you're not you're keeping one less creature too, right? So like, you're still only keeping the one best thing. They're keeping the one best thing, and then they're getting to play their thing first. Right? How is Kaya's Wrath just not better? Oh, I think it is. I mean, like, I mean, it does get rid of Planeswalkers, but like this might not. This either. doesn't either. Right. So yeah. like, they're going to keep their Planeswalker. You're getting rid of the same amount of creatures. Yeah. And then they get to. I guess. But here's the thing, right? You play this on four. No. They still get a guy. Or you play this on five. They on their turn five they go. On your turn five you go. You don't get to play anything. On their turn six they go. And then they get to play something, but you do have untapped mana, so it's nice. But they still got their keep their planeswalker. I don't yeah. know. It's really good if you're behind, sure, for sure. But all sweeper, you can say that about all sweepers. This is boop. Flying first strike, vigilance, lifelink. That's a lot of abilities. This card's probably busted and limited. Uh, that's a lot of abilities for a three three flyer. Yeah, but it costs six. I don't. I don't even think this is great and limited because it's still only a three three. No, this is a great finisher. If you have like, a, if you, you have can, a four butt, it front attack of it. and it protect badly. No, greatly. <laughs> Teo the shield mage. An Talk uncommon, about badly. An uncommon planeswalker, my dude. Uh, you have hexproof. Cool. Create a zero three white wall creature token with defender. Uh, five loyalty, and you're making walls for two. Okay. So this thing at its ceiling is three mana eats two removal spells because they have to eat the wall that you neg on and then hit it with a lightning strike to, to remove it. This is, yeah, the, the dirtle is real here. This card, uh, this is like, you could slap the null, ma the null rod flavor text on this and be like, uh, it doesn't do anything. And then they're like, no correction. He does nothing. And you're like, oh, he does do nothing. Let me see the null rod. Oh, you don't know the Null Rod flavor text? No. It's good. I think it's actually space. Null Rod. Gerard, but it doesn't do anything. Hannah, no, it does nothing. That's pretty cool. It does nothing. Yeah. That's that's what that's what it, that's what it does. Yeah. And this card kind of does nothing. No. Like, it, it's not bad. I mean, it's not it's not exciting. I don't think this card is meant to be exciting. Teo, this has to be the weakest Planeswalker Spark I've ever seen. He, he protect, he protect, but <laughs> most importantly, he, he protect. protect. <laughs> this card does not beat Mono Red by itself. No, it does not. Doesn't it, though? No. No, what, because it gives Doesn't you Hexproof? They literally point one, one, one thing at it. You have to make a wall to block whatever creature they have, and they have multiple creatures that can have three power. I mean, that... That's that's that card does not beat mono red, not even close. Not even close. No, Raptor Hatchling is better than that card. In wow, mono red. that's a that's a bold claim, my dude. It is. What do you think about Teo's Light Shield? Three mana for an O three. This is just the wall that it makes. Oh, only this guy does not have defender. When Teo's Light Shield enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on target <coughs> creature you control. That's a cool card. It okay. could be a one four. Mm -hmm. Is it a cool card though? Do I want to pay three mana for an O three? No, of course you don't. It's not a cool card. This sucks. <laughs> Tomic Distinguished Advocist. White, white for a 2-3 flyer. This card's sick. Okay, so that's a good rate already. Yeah. Lands on the battlefield and land cards in graveyards. Can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. So basically it's a sacred this is ground. legacy staple. Your opponents can't play cards from graveyards? What? This is a lot of abilities this just is, on like a... Because it's a legacy staple. It it shuts off... Whatchamacallit? It shuts off the 2020. Merit Age. Your opponents can't combo with Merit Age. This is a legacy staple in White Weenie. In, oh, in that's taxes. real sick. Yeah. And, and plus, your opponents can't play land cards from the graveyard. You all right, dude? You just have a revelation? 
No, I'm just thinking about oh, it. Okay. Like also lands, it's it's great against lands too. Yeah. You can't life from the loan. Yeah. Wow, that's this card is fantastic. <clears throat> the only problem is that it's, it's white white, but I mean considering it, all the like it has three very unique it, abilities. It just goes in taxes. It's a two three for two, and it has flying. Like this is great. Yeah, it's it's evasive, deals damage. Like it, this card's great. It's a cool card. And, and but, you can't wasteland. And yeah, and the crazy thing about it is it, it's not it. It's got so much stuff going for it, but it's not even a good card. Plus, it in, still in, lets you like standard. It still lets you ghost quarter them with land and arbiter. Yeah, you can still be like land and arbiter in your land. Has that ever happened to you? Were you ever upset about it? <laughs> <laughs> it's never happened to me before. It's like my least favorite interaction in Magic. I always keep two simian spirit guides in my deck list. For nice. That. You're like <laughs> in response, exile two to all search, buddy. Got him. <laughs> you're not gonna. You're not gonna stop me. Three mana. Top, tap target permanent. If it's an artifact, destroy it. I like this card. I like this card a lot, actually. It's um, This card is basically just artifact removal, right? It's, it's like Invoke... What's the card called? Invoke the Divine. Yeah, Invoke the Divine. Except instead of gaining life and destroying an enchantment, you just draw a card, which is super nice. You replace yourself, and it's, it's flexible, right? So, like, if you're staring down uh, a lethal attack, this is an out to see two cards... In order to buy yourself a turn. Right. Like, like, that's really good. It's artifact. It's flat out artifact destruction. You can destroy an artifact with this every time and draw a card. But if you need to, to, to just get a creature out of the way, yep. like, you can still do that and you still draw a card. This card's great. Yep. I like this card a lot. No, Fibblethip was on top of that statue. Was he really? Yeah, that's the. Yeah, Fibblethip totally lost. Fibblethip standing on the, on on the statue. What statue. The statue that's coming down. That's, we that's, can't see it, right? No, someone said that in chat. Because in on the card, we're going to see Fibblethip standing on the statue. We're done. Trusted Pegasus, three mana free, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it attacks, target attacking creature without flying gains flying. They made this card an uncommon in... Uh, it was a 1-3. Yeah, it was a 1-3. They made this card uncommon in, like, what was it, Guilds Ravnica or Ravnica Allegiance? Because it was so good. And, like, now it's back to common again. And, like, this card, this ability is just insane. Like, yeah, having a 2-2 two, two flyer that gives another creature flying is just so good. And making it a common is... Really, really scary. I'm not thrilled about that. I know you haven't seen the entire set yet, so uh -huh. I'm assuming you haven't seen the card that goes with this one. No. But this, uh, this flying horse. Oh no, I've seen, I've seen that. Yeah, because that's okay. that was storyline. Wasn't long for the world. Uh, one three blocks better, and one three survives a few more things. But I mean, like a two two is better, is, is more aggressive. So yeah. I don't know. Like, Which this... is generally what you're the deck that you're playing it in. Correct. In the first like place. if I'm gonna give somebody else flying and I'm attacking, my goblin's flying now. Right. right, like it's a card that's based on attacking, right? Like the ability is is most effective when you're attacking because that's the only way it works. So you're already encouraging attacking. So making it a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-3 is, is interesting. Either way, this card's great. Oh, I didn't even think about that too. Uh, Swenny Boy said about the, the last card that we were talking about, the artifact one, that it's actually great because um, not only does it do everything we said, but if they don't have an artifact, it just cycles. Right, it's yeah. never dead. Yeah, You can tap their land during their upkeep if you want to. The Wanderer. Four mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. That's good. That's decent. Mm -hmm. Exile a creature with power four greater. That's also decent. Like this is this card's pretty good. It but it's four. This should be three. If this is three, I'm like in four and starts it. No, it wouldn't work. Because of the neg two. Right. Exiling a creature with power four greater just for like if you're paying four mana to do that, right? Like and, and we have. Like um, you know, call her the culprit or whatever, yeah. or neck snap, whatever, <clears throat> like cards like that. Um, you're already paying four for that. And then you have a planeswalker with three loyalty on the board, so you can do it to a second creature. You're killing two creatures for four mana. And then you're preventing all non-combat damage dealt to you and other permanents. Like, eh, this has a lot of things going for it. Like, it's not it's not terrible. Yeah, so the I feel like these the, the two abilities that are on this card are opposing abilities, right? In the decks that you're with creatures that have a power greater than four or greater they're generally not playing cards that are doing non-combat damage to you in the first place right. so that kind of doesn't really make sense i to feel me. like a lot of these planeswalkers are sideboard cards like this one teo like a lot of these cards are not going to be there's no there's no main deck place for these no cards, of course you know what i'm saying no no wanderer's strike five is it is her name just wanderer we don't know who she is interesting or they are exile target creature then proliferate for five mana mm. Oop. Eh. i feel like we can do better what more do you want for an uncommon? No, I think for uncommon, it's great. Yeah, we're we're just we're we're doing it in the context of the playability of the card. It's irrelevant if it's a common or an uncommon. Cookie Monster, what's going on? Good seeing you. Yeah, it's fine. War Screecher, two mana for a one three. Like, and we're not saying that like for an uncommon, this is not good enough. We're saying mm -mm. we're still having to evaluate cards in the context in the, of playability. In the context of playability yeah. for standard, right? Like or constructed. <clears throat> 
And just because it's a good uncommon doesn't mean doesn't make it any better for constructed. You know what I mean? Um, worst creature, two mana, other creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. This card is just great and limited. Like for one, a one, three for two with flying is pretty standard. We've seen this card in the past three sets, I think, a one, three flyer. This is better than I thought, actually, because I thought it was one of those, uh, like, uh, is it Blightkeeper Bat? Or the, there was a cycle of cards where you paid like six mana and you sacrificed your one drop and it did something like this. I didn't realize that you can repeatedly do it, which is nice. You can repeatedly pump. Oh, anthem every turn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every turn, it's just yeah. an anthem effect, which is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm game. <clears throat> oh, now we hit the blue. Ashiox Skulker, five mana for a three-five, and it can't be blocked. We've seen that before, have we? Yeah, there was a. Is it Sea Serpent? Frilled Sea Serpent. Frilled Sea Serpent. Let's take. A there gander. was a blue card in in one of the last, and it's in standard right now. That, that I think sounds it's a, right. It's either a three five or a three six. Oh, it's a four six oh, for four, six. six mana, and yeah. it's for seven mana. Uh, it's it just a buffed blocked. version. of that. So this is a significant yeah. decrease, which, which is actually better, right? Because it gets neg one neg one, but it's also gets it's cost three less to and activate. And you don't have to so. face. Yeah, exactly. What a deal! What a bargain! What a bargain for this my card's limited sick. deck. No, this card is terrible. You're crazy. Augur of Bolas, two mana for a one three. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards uh, of your library. Put them on the bottom of your library. <laughs> for those who don't know, that's what every Augur of Bolas that's ever been cast has done. Uh, you may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them, put it into your hand. Never happens. I've never had that happen to me. Uh, all it does is you look at the top three, and then you're like, you're like, cool. And then you put them on the bottom. That's what Augur of Bolas does. I didn't want that Tefri. Look at the bottom three cards. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> what this card does. I like this card. I like it because it's a three butt. Vili, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Avon Eternal, three mana for a two two with flight. Card's great. When it enters the battlefield, a mass one. So it's a two. So this is basically the equivalent. Uh, we've seen this card a lot recently. It's yeah, the, yeah, it's a, a two two that makes a one one. Yeah. Except for this one, that's not flying. Right, but it also it's, it doesn't. Uh, oh, it has flying itself actually, right. which is good. Monkey knife fight. Thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back, buddy. <laughs> Monkey knife fight. That's right. That's Jeez. right. No, but it's like the um. There was the. Uh, it's it's in, a lady. In Ixalan, there was the Merfolk one that made a one one Merfolk. Like there's been a bunch of two twos recently for yeah. three mana that make one ones with yeah. them. This one, this one I actually think is better because the the bigger body itself has the evasion, but on top of that, the mass mechanic is just better than creating a one one thopter because it can get bigger. So this to me is well. Just here's better. the thing: it's bigger. It's better if it's the first a mass, right? But if it's the second a mass, then you're not getting a body out of it. You're getting a two two and a plus one plus one counter. No, but it does I make it bigger. You think? Uh, I think that's worse than getting a new creature. Yes. Okay. I think putting a plus one plus one counter on an right. already existing a mass is worse than getting another one one. I can, I can you see. You know that. what I mean? I can see that. So I think in situations this is better. I think the the two two itself is better because it has flying, and I still don't think we're playing this in constructed. But I think we're always playing it in limited no matter what. Cook, cookie monster. If, if I happen to see anything that that screams mod, and I'll let you know. Bond of Insight, four mana. Each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Return up to two instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile it. What's? I wish this was an instant. First off, that would be gas. Uh, I don't want to be main phasing a, in this in a deck with instants and sorceries. This has no play. You're like, mind. I'm gonna play Bond of Insight during my main phase. Oh, two counter spells. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're tapped out. Fantastic. Um, and then the other thing is like, what is like? It's weird that there's like mill for both players. Like, why am I milling you two? Why not, man? <laughs> I guess you got me. Why not? Why not? I didn't think about that. Touche. Touche. Either way, I mean, I don't know. I can see this being played in control decks. Like, in the late game, like, if you have seven, eight mana, like, play Bonds of Insight, draw two, any two cards that you've already played. Yeah. Sinister Sabotage, you can get back Sphinx's Revelation, you know, stuff like that. Cryptic Command. Yeah, this is not played. I, I don't know. I could see this being played as a one or a one or two of an. No, because pieces of the puzzle is just better. Not necessarily. No. Also, is well, I guess because you can legal? return legal in what? I'm talking about standard. So or, I mean, I mean, I wasn't talking about standard. Oh, I am. I thought. Well, you were saying cryptic command and stuff like I, that. That was a joke. Was, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so then we're in agreement. So, so pieces of the puzzle says really the top five cards. You're like put up two instant or sorcery cards from among them in your hand. Yeah. This does great. This, yard, so this is so like back, yeah. In yeah. the late game, you're guaranteed to get two sure. cards, and it could be your two best cards. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I think this has uses. It's not terrible. Yeah. Plus, like, against other control decks, milling for four? I don't know. I mean, like, I guess you're... Yes, we did. Real Sky. sky. Did you do white first and now blue? That is correct. We are going in order. Uh, except for uh, we're going to do white, blue, black, artifacts, and lands, because that ended up being 125 cards exactly. And then green, red, and multicolor, because that was also 125 cards. So it's split into two. Callous Dismissal, one and a blue. Return target, non-land permanent to its owner's hand. 
And then a mass. Yeah, this is this is just a bounce spell that makes a one one. It doesn't get rid of the gods though. Like, I mean, it does. No, they're saying get rid of it. It's it's oh nothing it's strictly does. worse than putting a removal spell on it because then they have to wait three turns to get it. Wait, what are we talking about? This. Uh, someone in comments said that you can get rid of gods with this. This callous dismissal. I'm assuming so. What did the, what did the last card do? Not that. Yeah, exactly. So it has to be this. Oh, one. you mill them. I guess I see what you're saying. Oh, okay. I guess. I mean. Sure. I mean, like, if you're if you're lucky enough to hit it, but it's super random. It's not like an answer you can plan to use. It's just yeah, like, that would just I might happen to know them, which is, God, I hope so, you know. It's a tiny mana war. Oh, it is a tiny mana war, actually. It's a 1-1 one, one mana war, this yeah. Is, this is. That's hilarious. And it's cheaper. I like that. <laughs> That's actually adorable. <laughs> oh, commence the end game. Oh, look at the art. Six. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Six. That's good. There you go. Get his little ear. You did it. I raised your raised the, the 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 ceiling for the for the camera, so you got a little extra space now. <laughs> Commence the end game. Six mana for an instant. Thankfully, we have an instant now. This spell can't be countered. All right, you're speaking my language. Draw two cards, then a mass X for X is the number of cards in your hand. This card seems great. Uh, most of the the draw uh, so and so number of cards at the end of their turn is usually three, <clears throat> right? So you're drawing one less card. But you're making an XX where X is the number of cards in your hand. So if you end up with four cards, this is draw two and make a 4-4 four, four for six mana, which is a pretty good deal. I don't see how this uh, commence the end game. End game doesn't come out till t- this Tuesday, buddy. Oh, man. Tuesday's early. Jeez. Moldrifter was better than this. R- really? Yeah. Moldrifter was a way to bridge yourself to the late game. Oh, but they're not. I don't think they're comparable. <clears throat> oh, you're just you're just responding. I see. Yeah, I was responding. But to like, that, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, like you're still gonna be able to like the 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 fact that this is uh, an instant is great because you're like sure. all right, end of your turn, I'll make a six six. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like this card actually has a potential to be very scary, especially because it can't be countered. So like, there's nothing you can really do about it. They're just gonna make a big dude. The, the the actual good part about this card that I can see, so like using this in some sort of tempo or control shell, is this card allows you to a hundred percent draw your cards. And you have the possibility of pressuring a planeswalker on untap. That's why I think this card is mm-hmm. good. Oh, for sure. Contentious plan. One and a blue. <clears throat> proliferate. Draw a card. We'll see play. It's just too narrow. Like, yeah. It doesn't do anything. If it was an instant, maybe. This cycles for two mana. Yeah, it's... Crush Descent. Four mana. Counter target spell unless control page two and a mass two. Would you play this if it cost three? If it was the standard if it three, cost three, three mana, yeah, for three sure. Mana one? The the thing is like there was already a four mana card like this where it's like a counter target non creature counter target counter target creature spell make a two two illusion, mm-hmm. which is basically the same thing. <clears throat> and um, yes, I did get a haircut. And um, like that wasn't that didn't see much play. Like for four mana, like it doesn't matter that you're making a two two. Like it just doesn't. That's not yeah. especially if your spell is not getting countered. Yeah, but but uh, t- I mean to be fair, no matter whether it counters or not, you still get a two two at least. Yeah, but so do you get you get a two two with Mystic Snake at least that, that and that's always going to counter the spell. Whatever, Mystic Snake is OP. Erratic Visionary, two mana for a one three draw card and discard a card. <laughs> I really dislike that looters cost two mana and a tap yeah. to loot. Like, it, I mean, I think one mana is fine. I don't think two mana is really the place to be here. It's I think it's still fine. You're always going to play this in limited. You're always going to have a loot effect, but. Eternal Skylord, five mana for a three three when it enters the battlefield of mass two. This card's gas. And limited, right? Yeah. I don't know if we're yeah, constructing yeah, with no. this guy. We're not no. Three three and a two two is pretty good. Zombie tokens you control are flying. That's that's a key. That's a that's a relevant ability right there. So you make a three three flyer and a two well, this isn't a flyer. But you make a three three and a two. It's still three three, that's a great body. But I mean, that's um, that's five power. Two of it floats. I think you undervalue a big zombie army token with keywords. What does that mean? When did we say we undervalued it? I don't. Yeah, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm valuing it pretty well. I mean, there, there's, there's an argument that it's worse because no matter what you do, if you have an army, you're, you're, you're having to invest all these resources that seem great because, like, we, so we, we look at that card. If I have that card on turn five and I cast it, it seems great, right? Because in the past, if I get five mana, or excuse me, five mana for five power, five toughness, that's a, a over two bodies. That's awesome, right? So then I go to recast that card again. All they have to do is spend one card to remove that 4-4 that I just put in play, and then essentially I just paid 10 mana, you know, and I have two 3-3 bodies left over. It's it's not that great. You but guys it, are super pessimistic about Proliferate. No, I mean, like, if you have a board with four Planeswalkers on it... and are already winning anyways. And, what, what is Proliferating 1 yeah, going to do like, for you? Like, I mean, a, that's irrelevant. That's I'm not going to play a card solely that pro, that proliferates, and that's it. Like, I, I just don't think that does enough, right? Like, putting 1-1 one, one counter it's on It's not even planes, you. Like, that's just not a thing. Counter. Yeah, I don't know. Like, that's... 
That's it proliferates cool and all. Like I like it as a mechanic, but I don't think it's going to be a end all be all. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's a harder to crash well, situation. And, right yeah, and we, we can also only we can only go over what we think, right? Because none of this is we we haven't experienced the format yet. Maybe proliferates busted. Maybe maybe there is a deck that puts three three creatures or three um, targets. I mean, if you have three or four planeswalkers out and you're putting one one uh, one one counter on each one, like that's a lot of value. I mean, uh, obviously, any chance you get to increase the loyalty on your planeswalkers, great. But at the end of the day, if you have three planeswalkers, you're probably already in an advantageous position. Fibble Thip the Lost. One and a blue for a 1-1. One, one. It's your boy. When Fibble Thip the Lost enters the battlefield, draw a card. If it entered the battlefield... For, if, you, if it entered from your library or was cast from your library, draw two instead. And then when it becomes the target of a spell, shuffle it into your owner's library. So you just get to shuffle this dude back in when he when he gets scared. <laughs> if they made a sorcery that costs zero and just said proliferate, 90% of decks won't want that card. I, yeah, yeah you would, I, I it I wouldn't be played. That's actually so true. It would not be played. Also, proliferating onto a zombie is just not a big deal. If I have a 4-4 four, four mass token and I make it a 5-5 five, five mass token, like, that's cool. But your card, the card that's doing that has to do a lot more than that. If Swole Mike says this is unplayable, we're going to have hands. No, I mean, clearly it's not unplayable, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be great. Here is the, the blue finale, finale of Revelation. X, blue, blue. Draw X cards. If X is 10 or more, so if you're drawing 10 cards, spending 12 mana, instead, shuffle your graveyard into your library, draw X cards, so... 10 untap five lands and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game this card sucks exile finale of revelation again i wish it was instant you don't have 12 mana to spend on this franklin if i have 12 mana, i want to win the game like this is not going to help me win the game and i'm going to end up drawing a six drop and be like untap five lands i'm going to be like <laughs> and then whiff go, on all lands go not draw lands i guess i untap and i get to keep a counter spell up but i know valley i don't know like i'm not I don't think this card is bad, but I think this cycle of mythics from the two we've seen so far. Um, oh, there's one that's really good. Two of them, actually. Okay, we'll see. We'll, oh, I think the green one's good. Yeah, it's Green Sun Zenith. It's also, well, it's better, it's better than, than Green Sun Zenith. It's better than Green Sun Zenith because Graveyard, that's, yeah, that's, that's sick. Having, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. Oh, I, I sh um, cut that out. I'll, I'll edit it out. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll out. edit it out for you, man. All right, make sure you uh, I don't know edit this out. This so, card. Okay, I don't like this card either. It's terrible. Meh. Flux Channeler, three mana for a 2-2. Two -two. This looks like this is just Laboratory Maniac, right? From there. I was going to say, it, it looks super familiar. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell proliferate... See, this is probably a card I would play because... Well, we're reviewing from whatever we whatever comes out. No, like, yeah. We, we talk about any other format. If I feel like it has legacy or modern, modern. applications, we'll name that too. Yeah. But like mostly, we're skewed towards standard, yes. Um, I would play this because it, it's a 2-2 two -two that does a thing, right? Like... If I just happen to play a, a spell, I'm going to get a, a sweet effect out yeah, of it. Yeah, and it does it over and over again. That's different. I'm not going to play a single card in my deck that fills and takes up a slot and then just proliferates and does no other thing because it's a terrible top deck. God Eternal Kefnet. A 4-5 flyer for 4, which is a completely reasonable... That's a completely reasonable stat. Uh, with flying, <laughs> you may reveal the first card you draw each turn as you draw it. Whenever you reveal an instant or sorcery card this way, copy that card and you may cast a copy of that card. That copy costs 2 less to cast. I think that's okay. What? That card's sick. No, no, no. I think that ability. The card is still fine. Well, I mean, the, I meant what the ability. What do you explain? Well, because don't think of it in the context of blue, so counterspell, right? Because obviously that's bad. That's obviously what right? I'm thinking. But right. like Vraska's Contempt for two black, and then you get to keep the Contempt. Yeah, it's pretty or, good. Or, or uh, um, the, the two mana cast down for one, for one black. Like, this card's really good in a tap out style deck. This card's very, very good. Yeah, it's very good. This is a really good card. I mean, I wasn't even arguing that it was good. I just wanted to hear some applications for it because yeah. it's, it's a two, it's a four or five flyer for four oh. that is almost impossible to deal with. Or, or you untap, or, or you reveal that non-counterable spell, draw two cards for four mana, and get yourself, and you and you keep the card in your hand, draw two more cards, like. And like I said about the first one, like I don't know how you're going to efficiently deal with these. I feel like this is just these are cards in standard that you're going to have to deal with every three turns, and I don't. I don't understand. Like, it just seems very hard to deal with. No, this is this is not viable in modern. Even though it can cast Ancestral Visions, it's not viable in modern because now you're talking about playing a four drop and then drawing your Ancestral Visions on even best case scenario, turn five. Like, that's, that's not going to work. That's that's too slow. I also don't think you can cast yes, it, Yes, right? you can. Yes, you can. Can you? Yep. You can cast all the zero mana spells. I feel I feel like you you said that with such confidence that I am a trust you looked it up. I yeah I, that's that's how I know. Okay yeah. Jace wielder of mysteries one blue blue blue. Uh, I like this guy a lot. Jay, if you would draw a card, wait. You like this card? You don't like this card? What? This is so bad. 
Go ahead. Let me okay. I want to hear your thoughts. If, if, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards, then you win the game. So, all right, fine. Might not come up a ton. It might, though. Plus one, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Draw a card. So you can either target yourself and help the milling aspect or just target them and draw a card. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that's nice about this is there are very few Planeswalkers for four mana that plus to draw you a card. Just straight up draw you a card. Right, because they're normally Ob five. Obnixilis costs five, draws you a card. Jace, Jace costs five. Secrets costs five, yeah. draws you a card. Yep. You know, all Ral Zarek, Tiffery, they all cost five and draw you a card. This is a four mana Planeswalker that draws you a card. Negative eight, draw seven cards. Then if your library has no cards in it, you win the game. Also fine. Um, the ultimate is just is junk, right? The first, the first and the third abilities don't do much, but right. like it's still a four mana planeswalker that's going to draw you an extra so card every turn. Here's 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 the reason this card sucks to me. Oh, it's because it costs triple blue. Sure, that's rough. That that like why do they like what is the what's even the reasoning for doing that? That like that that makes literal no sense to me that we would make this card cost four, three of it being blue. If it was two and two blue, that's different for me because then you can put it in a soul tie deck or you can put it in a you know a, a two color deck because four mana trying to cast this on turn four even in a two color deck like where's the application i just don't uh the mono blue deck that i'm gonna build obviously oh okay well then dude this card's gas so funny thing with kefnet hostage taker can't steal kefnet because you can just shuffle right it's anything with exile right correct yeah it's it's really weird Jace's Triumph. Three mana, draw two cards. If you control a Jace, draw three cards. This card's great. Better divination. This is, again, like, there's several cards in the set that are strict upgrades to existing cards. This is one of them, um, where it's a strict upgrade from divination, where you're drawing... It's still three mana to draw two. If you control a Jace, draw three. I mean, like, if you're playing Jace the Mind Sculptor in Modern, like, this just draws you three for three? Like, is that... I could even see playing like this as a one of or something. Yeah. Go go back one. We, uh, we didn't discuss that, but I told you earlier. This card's an instant win card with Leveler. With the card leveler. Right. You just win the game, yeah. Sure. For those who don't know, leveler is a card that makes you flip your entire library, and then so this card wins via Lab Maniac effect. Anyway. Kazmina Enigmatic Mentor. Look at this new Planeswalker. I like this card. Four mana for a five loyalty <clears throat> Planeswalker. Uh, spells your opponent's cast that target a creature or Planeswalker you control cost two more to... I think that's the, I think that's the Roomba out there. Oh, okay. suppose your opponent's cast. You want to close the door? It is closed. Is it not? No. That's yeah, fine. All right. Suppose your opponent's cast that target a creature or planeswalker you control costs two more to cast, so it's just going to make. Uh, didn't you say this card was? You were like this card's. When I first saw this card, my initial thought, because again, you saw that I misread it, but I thought this card was busted because I thought the wizards had flying. Oh yeah, you thought they were making two two flyers. Yes, right. and you yeah. get to loot on top of that, and on top of that, it taxes their their removal spells. <laughs> so I don't the think this card's loose. broken, but th this card actually seems really kind of strong to me. I actually like this card. I agree with you. I mean, I think the card's fine. I wish it wasn't four mana. We've seen so many of these new planeswalkers that aren't rares, and their ability versus their effect, like one of them is just not playable, right? This effect Correct. as well as this ability are both seem good to me. I think both halves are good because I mean, Correct. like the Vraska's contempt costs six now, yep. right? Like stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's fine. You're making two two creatures is nice. The draw and the discard is nice. Like the fact that you can only do it twice is a little is a little rough. But that's what that's what that's what stinks. But that's the cool thing about the about what they did, right? That's that's design. That's that's really cool. Oh, I agree. You have to make that tension. You have mm -hmm. to give it. You have to give it like, and you you leave it on the board. You incentivize players to not make three one three two twos and leave it on the board, mm -hmm. right? So it's 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 interesting. Yep. Kasmina's transmutation. This card's good. Turn turn dudes into frogs. This good. This card's good. One and a blue for an enchant creature. It loses all abilities and has a base power and toughness every one one. I mean, it's a frog. It should just become a frog, right? It should be. I I don't I don't understand. Just make it a frog. Hop away now, little eternal. Go eat some flies. <laughs> yeah, little can, eternal. Yeah, you can actually oh, push shuts that, off. Yeah, shuts she's, them off. she's literally telling you in the flavor text what to do with this card. But that card's good because deep freeze was played, and that's it. Just basically for mono blue decks, it it deals with a niv visit for two damp for two mana. Kiora's dam breaker. That's one scary looking six dude. Six mana for a five six. When it enters the battlefield, proliferate. Again, this card's fine. I would play this in limited six mana for a big body, and it does body. proliferate, right? Like, well, I mean, I'm always down to pro proliferate. Any card that says proliferate, I'm probably putting it in my right. Deck. But as long as it's not a card that says that just says proliferate the end. Yeah, right? that's like, it. That's no, we're not, not playing that ever. By the way, go back real quick. Do you think that that dude is uh, super sticky, or does he look like he's super like you just glide right off his back? Sli I would think slimy, slimy, like okay. a fish, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm wondering what you think. Why would you think sticky? Because he, he's got a little green goo going to him. But I mean, so do he, fish, right? But that's sticky. Fish are sticky. It's, 
Fish are slimy. Yeah, slimy. Well, that's it's sticky. It sticks Those to your two fingers. Different things. No, you slimy said, you is sticky. Said, is it sticky or would you slide right off? Slide right yeah, off. Yeah, I wanted is slimy. to know. I wanted to know which one you thought. Do you think that it's it's no slimy isn't slide right off? No, come on. No, slimy is get a, slimy is sticky. Can we get confirmation in chat? Let if you what touch a fish, giraffe? it's sticky. It's slimy. Well, what would an obese giraffe look like? This is the question. This is the questions I ask myself. Which part do you think the neck would get obese too? Would it have a fat no, neck? No, it would just have an awkwardly skinny neck. Would it have a oh, like? What about the really thin legs? Would they be fat? Just Google it. Oh my God! Can I Google obese giraffe? Please hold. <laughs> oh! Look at, look at the first one. <laughs> that's great. There's no way that's real. It's a magic real. card. It's a magic card. Well, midget obese oh giraffe. Oh my God. Reverse reach. I can't. Hold on, I want to read what it says. No, we're done. Dude, we're, we're doing, doing a, a we're doing a card review. review. Lazo tap a plating. One and a blue, a mass one. So you make a one one. One and a blue for a one one. UN permanent two control gain hex proof until turn. I like this card a lot. I, think I do too. Very, very good. I do too. Um you're not gonna use this to make a one one, you're gonna use this as a counter spell. You're gonna play it, you're gonna counter the Vraska's contempt, let's say. Which dive down's better. And then you're gonna make a one one. What? Dive down's just better. I don't think it's just better. You make a one one here. You make a creature. Hmm. Plus one mana. I think they're. I would think they're both good. This is the image Soul Mike wanted to review. Oh, it's just a. It's just a nice, nice. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I think it's still good. Um, no, but, I think the cards. But the difference good. is, it's a UN permanent two control, so you can't right, be burned out. One. You can't be. They can't target your planeswalker. That's true. So I mean, like, this is more versatile than dive down. I think for sure. You can catch a a, a a naughty burn player that's trying to ma uh, pre combat main a phase. A naughty burn. Yep. I caught you, you naughty little you, burn you, player. You can counter their lightning strike and put up a blocker for their two one. It's pretty good. Naga Eternal three two for three. All right, that's cool. <laughs> it's like nice. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that you know what? You, you can. I love how you can tell the status of MTG artists by the cards they gave you. Um, Johan. Yeah, like this. No, 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 no offense to this guy. The art's fine. But you can tell he's a newer, like, not established MTG artist. Whereas, like, obviously we know who did this. And she's incredible. And she would, she would, uh, like, she's a Planeswalker artist. You know what I mean? Uh, Narset partner avails one blue blue for five. Uh, each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Well, I'm not worried about that anyway. This card's so good. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land from it and put it in your hand for the rest. So it's basically, what, negative five to impulse? No, negative, it's negative two to impulse? It's worse impulse, right? Sure, because you can't hit a creature or land, but yeah. still. No, but I think this card's really good. This is a three-mana Planeswalker that's pretty good. For three mana, sure. Yeah, and, and the fact that it shuts off Tafri draws, it shuts off... Um, oh, wow, you can play this into Emergency Powers, and then they like you draw seven, they draw none. Or that, they draw that one. Work? Why wouldn't it? Each opponent can't draw oh, more you than mean, one card you each mean turn. If, if they had that, uh, if you had that on the battlefield first. Yeah, you play this, yes. and then you play Emergency Powers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's an Ascanta activation. Yeah, it's two Ascanta activations. That's, yeah, that's sure. pretty good, actually. It's not bad. I mean, for three mana, like you're getting, two, you're drawing two cards for three mana, and you and the actually, and it stays on the board. You know what's actually really good about this is if you're on the play in a control mirror, this card's just great because you can activate your Escanta twice essentially. You're yep. you're gonna force them to deal with this card. They have to avert their game plan because their game plan revolves around seeing extra cards, and that's gonna shut off one of their main win cons. Like they have to go out of their way to deal with this card now. This definitely is not, good. definitely not strictly better than divination. That is that is not the case. Strictly better does not. This card? Yeah. No, 100%. That's not That's not what that means. No. Um, this card's of, really good. There's a lot of fuzz around I see that. I don't know what's going on. Oh, that's why. Yeah, because you got a lot of wrinkles behind you. Yeah, that's... Yeah. It's whatever. Doesn't matter. How's Narset's it? Reveal. How's it now? It's beautiful. Okay. It's so much better. Uh, or not, Narset's Reversal. I said Narset's <laughs> real. Blue, blue. Uh, copy target instant or sorcery spell, then return it to its owner's hand. You may choose new targets for the copy. Copy target instant or sorcery spell, then return it to its owner's hand. So this is effectively a very narrow remand. That's just a little bit better. Well, it's not a narrow remand. It I is mean, narrow. Well, it's narrow in the sense that, but it also does a lot more, right? Like, I mean, if they crypt a command, you remand their crypt, crypt a command and also play your own. Yeah, but I, I just... So I don't I don't think this card is is it's definitely not playable in 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 modern or legacy, and I just, I don't I don't see the application for this in standard either. I don't either. I don't see any applications yeah. for it. But I think the card is fine. I mean, it's I a cool it's, it's cool design, right? Like I don't think it's a bad card. I just don't know where it would go. No escape two and a blue counter target spell target creature or planeswalker spell, which is what I want to do. 
if that spell is countered this way, exile instead of putting it in its owner's graveyard. Uh, which is interesting, because if you counter one of the gods with this, they can just put it back in their deck. So this is actually terrible at countering the god cycle, right? If the spell is countered, exile it. And if it will be exiled, they put it into... No, the, the card's not on the battlefield, so that it doesn't have that well, that's text. That's not what it says. Uh, just Kefnet, maybe? Or... I don't know if it'd be in here yet. Oh, wow. This is... When God Eternal dies it or is put into exile from the battlefield. The battlefield. Yeah. Oh, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, then but I, we're good. I see where you're going with that. Yeah, I was worried. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then scry one. Yeah, this card seems good. Countering creature or planeswalker is all I want to do. For for three mana, it seems fine. You're exiling the spell. You're scrying one. I like it. I, I I don't know if it's going to replace the counter spells that exist, like Sinister Sabotage, but it is easier to cast, and it is countering the relevant cards. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that that'll. I don't think you'll see that. Scry one. Scry is good though. Come scry on. Scry is good. Relentless advance. Four That's mana it. from for a three three. This is basically four mana for a three three. Or or if you have a three counters. three, you're not getting any creature out of it. Not not ideal. I don't think. Rescuer Sphinx, 3-2 for 4. Flying, as it enters the battlefield, you may return a non-land permanence you control to its owner's hand. This card's good. If you do, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. In limited. This card's pretty good in limited. I, okay, so here's the thing. This card is called Rescuer Sphinx. It does not have flash. Yeah. You cannot rescue anything with it. It would have to be a 5-drop. If they drop. go to kill your creature, yeah. you cannot flash it in and rescue that creature. <clears throat> How's it going, Josh? This is one of two... Uh, glaring flavor fails I saw this is, I, I'll, I'll see the other one when it comes I forgot what it was but this is like one of the cards where I was just like it's not rescuing it's literally just bouncing a thing that's just doing fine go home it's just like sending something home I mean it's still good I mean it's a 4-3 for 4 and, and it you allows can, you to get another ETB effect on your auger yeah, like, yeah you the can you can look at the whiff. you can put the next 3 on the bottom yeah mm -hmm. that's pretty sweet that's pretty sweet Silent Submersible. This is the other flavor fail. That's hilarious. This back card's back. so bad. Blue, blue for a 2-3. When it deals combat damage to the player, draw a card. That's actually pretty good. However, here's my problem with it. It is a silent submersible. <laughs> it's quiet. It's, you don't hear it coming. Beyond that, it's it has submersible. No, although, it, and, and, and despite these facts, it has no evasion whatsoever. And it takes two people to crew. I can block this with any creature I have. It doesn't have to have flying. It doesn't have to have anything. It just sits on the ground. I have a I have a three three ground dude. It can block the silent submersible. Why can't it? This card's it, really bad. Why is this a rare? Why is it in the set? Like, look at the <laughs> card. Why is what does this even have to do with anything? Are there any cards at all that had to do with water like other than that slimy fish? What's quiet about this card? If if you're selling something silent, if you have a silent submersible. I'm going to imagine that nothing can hear it. You can't hear this thing coming. Why would you feel so that way? So I can't block it because Why would you? it's silent. Oh, okay. Because it's silent. <laughs> Needs island walk. Oh my god, it should have island walk. This card should because have Because it's island. underwater. <laughs> it's Come on. Uh, island dive. Whatever. Come on. I just, I don't even feel like this is a bad card. I feel like it's missing something that is clearly implied by the name. Like, it also should have Island Home. Island Home. Because if you don't have water yes. for this thing, <laughs> yeah. you shouldn't be able to use it. <laughs> I feel like this card is missing, like, four logical... Yeah, like, this is terrible. It needs four things on this card to be like, how does this exist? I don't understand. But it doesn't. So it's whatever. Do you think when Daniel was given the, the design to draw this card, that he knew how bad it was just going to be? Sweet art. I like the I art. I don't think anyone knew. No. And also, I look at this, and it's a rare, and I feel like it wasn't a rare at some point. Like, I feel like it was probably, Common. it was probably a rare. It had a rare ability. Like, it had, like, it had Island Walker. It had, sh like, Unblockable or something. And they had to take that off because it was too strong, but they just didn't bump it down to, like, an Uncommon. Because know. having a 2-3 creature, if you had a 2-3 creature for 2 mana, that whenever it dealt combat damage to a player or Planeswalker, you drew a card... That's rare. Even that's barely that's barely rare. But this is a vehicle that you have to have another creature to crew, and it's also susceptible to artifact removal as well. So it's like there's so many metrics on which this is not like yes. it's it's so. This is a fail on many levels. This is a fail on many levels. Like I keep expecting more. I'm like, and can I give it hexproof? <laughs> can I give it unblockable? Can I give it flying? I don't know. Sky Theater Strix, one and a blue for a one-two. When you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn. Eh, not bad for a limited. I mean, I'm gonna play off a one-two flyer for two cool and art. limited make. 
Actually, this reminds me of the the one one for two in Agriel. No, oh. the one one for two in Dominaria. Sarah's the 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 one the one owl that gets plus one plus one whenever you anyway. Oh yeah, I know which one you're talking about. It costs one and a white. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. It, I think it has first strike. I think your dad had first strike. Do you remember right. that? Do you remember that? I, do, first I, don't, I haven't seen him. Well, one day. You'll see him again. Tell me, have you seen him? Okay, so anyway, Spark Double, four mana for uh, a zero, zero. I like this card a lot, actually. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> You're like, buddy, I've seen you cube That's drop. why I sent you I a deck list. I know how you take these clones. That's why I sent you a deck list with it in it. You may have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control, except it enters with an additional 1-1 one, one counter. If it's a creature, it enters with an additional loyalty counter if it's a planeswalker. And if it isn't legendary, and it isn't legendary if that permanent is legendary. So if I have an Ashiok, I can make a copy of my Ashiok, have two Ashioks, the second one is not legendary, and it gets an extra loyalty counter. Card's good. Real I'm good. sold, dude. One of my big, one of my favorite clones for for Cube is Clever Impersonator because it can hit anything. Because it can hit anything. You can hit an Oblivion Ring. You can hit a Planeswalker. You can hit an artifact. It's like Frexy Metamorph. Only you get more options, right? And that's one of my favorite clones uh, that's ever been printed because it, it there's a lot of things to hit. You can hit an Elspeth. <clears throat> Uh, I think Spark Double is is a nice middle ground with that, where you can hit a creature or a Planeswalker, which are two of the things you always want to hit. And then it gets an extra loyalty counter on it. You get an extra counter. You, if the Planeswalker you're copying is your own, you can have two of that. You can have two Jace the Mind Sculptors mm -hmm. in play. This card seems real cool. Uh, DiBiase, if you copy your own Gideon, it would enter the battlefield with both counters on it. It would be a 5-5, five because five, it's a creature and a Planeswalker. It would get a loyalty counter and a and a plus one plus one counter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Josh, I, I didn't see that list. I saw you posted it, but oh, I haven't looked at it yet. Let me stop you right there. It copies a planeswalker or creature you control. That makes it worse. Oh, you thought it was any? Anything? I thought it was any. It's I mean, I think the card's good, but I, I don't think it's eh, like it's amazingly not as good. busted. But it's. It, I think in standard, it's really good. It's a win more card now. Like it's not because it, like you have a good. I have a good planeswalker. I have a good, uh, good creature. Now I have two of that. The the best part about clones was that you get to like if your opponent plays something like a grave titan, you have nothing on board. Wow, your clone's never dead. You just we were we were up titan. here and then literal. I'm done now. We just came straight. We plummeted. This and that's what's funny about magic. Like one or two words on a card change everything. Like that one that said attacked or, or blocked this turn. Correct. Like that, yeah. no, that one said this turn, right? The 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 thing that there was another card that said or, right? No, the card I'm talking about. I know about, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't remember which one you're talking about. Then. Oh, it was the one that said sacrifice. They get to keep a creature and a planeswalker, right? And it was or planeswalker. Oh, the five yeah. mana, the five mana. So there's one. been like three yeah. cards so far that have like one or two words on them that change the entire card for the better or for the worse. I does allow you to negative a planeswalker then copy. Copy. Copity. 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 Hippity. Copity. Planeswalkers on them. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, every single one of the uncommon planeswalkers we had, they have double activations because they go down to one mana. Right. So that actually lets you do it. Well, they go to one, lo one loyalty. One loyalty, I meant, yeah. You don't have to remove uh, mana counters from planeswalkers. That's a cool card. It didn't say attack. No, it said attacked or blocked, thankfully. You could tell, like, if it said attacked and blocked, it'd probably be much worse. I think you're a lot, uh, a lot, more, strictly, a lot more restricted. We could say creatures. that's strictly worse. You, I would say that is strictly worse, correct? <laughs> we don't like to use that term, but... Spellkeeper, weird. Uh, <laughs> three mana for a 1-4. Sacrifice it for two mana. Return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, it's not terrible. Get back Cryptic Command. That's all I want to do. This is boop. You can do it end of turn. End of turn, sacrifice, get get Cryptic Command back to the Cryptic Command. You know? It's pretty That's, good. This is boop. Nailed it. Stealth Mission. That's what, that's, this, that's what this guy should be on. That's what this silent commercial <laughs> should be on. But it's not. Because everyone can see it. And everyone can hear it. It only it's a submarine that literally it's, it's always like it's always at the top of the water. Of water. You know, what, are you, what are you doing, man? We we, we I see can you, see you, bro. See you. <laughs> you're not you're doing terrible. And then they're like, we're coming for you. And it you're sounds like, like an old I'll, steamboat. I'll block. It sounds like an old steamboat. Just loud as hell, <laughs> just floating it's like through the water. Can <laughs> <laughs> like, you hear that? But it's only moving like two miles an hour. And then you're like, nah, man, that's silent. And then the guys, the guys are piling. They're like, I think they hear us. And they're like, nah, this is silent, bro. You can't hear anything. Silent. No, I'm pretty sure they're blocking. Oh, yeah. They can't hear us. How can they block? <laughs> well, they're blocking, so. Three mana. Put two 1-1 one -one counters on target creature you control. That creature can't be blocked this turn. I don't hate it. Yeah. 
I could kill you could just kill someone out of nowhere with this card, which is what I like. But I mean obviously not constructed comment. Come on, don't be. Ocean Infinity, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back. Seven months in a row. Really appreciate it. Tamio's Epiphany, four mana. Scry four, then draw two. Per Scry four is a pretty serious That's, effect. I'm good. I'm good with this. This is nice. <laughs> I mean, this is almost constructed playable, I can see. Like yeah. drawing two cards is great for four mana. And if you have something like scrying four on top of it, it's just it's real good. There are cards, there are there are um, control decks, like, back when uh, we had Scarab God, like, there were tap-out control decks that, you know, they, they just, they didn't necessarily rely on counter spells. Like, this card it can be good in the right deck. I've always relied on counter spells. What? I've always relied on counter spells. No, you don't ever play counter spells. I rely on them, Mike Robert. Unless they're attached Mike to Robert. a snake. It's just, it's just Bert, okay? It's Bert. It's Bert. <laughs> it's just call me Bert, okay? Mike Bert? I'm out now. It's Bert. Hey, Mike Bert. Bert. Yeah, this card's good. I don't know if it's again. I don't know if it's constructed playable, but I'm just saying that like. Oh, basically, dig through time. That's an interesting way to put it. It's scry four, close. draw two. Instead of like, yeah, dig through time is scry seven, draw two. This is scry four, draw yeah. two. Scrying four is a lot. Dude. Oh heck yeah. Is this card better than precog? No, because precog lets you cast it instant. Speed. That's all I want is instant speed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Teferi's time twist. Sometimes you got to do that again. One and a blue. Exile a permanent. You got to do the time twist again. Let's do the time. I don't know what you're talking again. about. It's, it's weird. all right. Whatever. Don't do that. Exile a permanent you control. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. If it enters the battlefield as a creature, it enters this. What if I cast this on Niv Mizzet Reborn? And then I get to draw like another four busted. or five cards? That's pretty busted. Yeah, that's pretty good. I also like the big pig with this, but we'll talk the about it. We'll, we'll get there. The big pig. The old big we'll pig. We'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, <clears throat> this card is fine if you're looking for this effect. I don't think it's a bad card. I just this is a card that you need a home for it, and if you don't have one, so this one is actually bad. to me like this. When you have the exile effect, the uh, the fact that it doesn't come back until end step is what makes it suck. Yeah, okay. Because I mean, if they go to remove your guy, you blink it, and then you and can then still they, block. Yeah, you still yeah. yeah you can't block with this. Yeah. So, but it gets a counter. That's important, right? I can't. I, I don't know. Is it? Can be. This is much better than Teferi's Purple Nurples. I agree <laughs> with you. <laughs> Teferi's Timey Twisters is much better than Teferi's Purple Nurples. I agree with you. <laughs> Got him with that one. Time, time tw timey Twisters. Yeah, I'll give you a little Timey Twister. One Timely Twister, sir. Thunder Drake. Four mana for a 2-3. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. This Thunder Drake's like, I need two spells. I need two spells. I got, I got, I'm not here for one spell. Okay, well, <gasps> I'm not. I'm not gonna be playing no two fours for three. Two threes for four, which is even worse. Oh, it's your boy. See, he's on the statue. He's adorable. Most my favorite character, in Magic. I know it is. Five mana. Put target non land permanent on top of its owner's library. We know it. We know it totally lost. Does I don't think it's. I nope. don't think we're gonna be playing. Nope. Totally lost, unfortunately. Zero four for one. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. It's not a bad card in limited, actually. It's. It, it really isn't. No, things like crack and hatchling have seen play, and like while this does have defender and crack and hatchling doesn't. It was very rare you were attacking with a Kraken Hatchling. With so. your zero four Hatchling? Well, you could pump it. You could. But I'm saying, like, that that was rarely the case. Mm. So. Aid, are you ready for the black? Yeah, I'm down. Are you? I need to know. That's what I'm here for. For the black? Yeah. All right. Aid the Fallen. Choose one or both. Return target <clears throat> creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return a Planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, this card seems good. It is good. It's in the right deck, this card's really this good. This is just two mana two. draw two in black. Yeah. And like one is always going to be Planeswalker, one's going to be a creature. And if you don't have both, you're still fine. You don't have to have two targets for it. I'm game. I I never liked you. Now get up. We have a fight to finish. That's good flavor <laughs> text. Bane Hound. One black. Lifelink Haste. One one. Man, when you look that thing in the face, it really looks like you're you're seeing double or triple. This is, you guys know Foresight? You know when you look at Foresight? Is that a for card? For C? Is it for C? For C is a draw spell, I think. You know the card, you know the art though, right? No. Is really? A giant, giant head in the middle. Oh, dude, that does it to me too. Yeah, it's creepy, right? That's it, super weird. Yeah, so this is just a, th this is like a four C to the to the next level. This will see standard play? Or are we talking about Eight no. of the Fallen, right? We're not talking about Bane Hound. I don't think Bane Hound is going to see any play. No. Bleeding Edge. One black black up to one target creature gets neg two neg two until end of turn, then a mast. Make it two in instant speed. I don't All think, right, no, I think two powered. is too good. That's Making too it two two. Then, you get a two two, yeah. Because it's a two two essentially that has like neg two neg two attached to it. It's like a baby chupacabra. Yeah. Make this it. is still a two two that comes into play and gives a creature negative two negative two. It's, yeah, but yeah. Uh... Really? I think this is actually fine. This is a two two that says when it enters the battlefield, give a creature negative two negative two for three mana. No, I don't like it. I, I don't think it's 
I don't think it's Chupacabra level, but I think it's actually fine in that context, if you look at it like that. Thanks. Thanks, Bobby Miser. Happy you started YouTube. And I think there's a reason it's uncommon. I think it's very, very good. I mean, obviously, you're always going to play this limited for, for like a thousand percent of oh, the hell, time, for yeah. sure. But, um, yeah. Bolus's Citadel. This is interesting, and I'm sure Ollie has done a, a lot of talking about this. Uh, three black, black, black. Legendary <clears throat> artifact. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. I like that colored artifacts are just a part of magic now. Yep. It doesn't have to be like... Uh, is that sarcasm? Or are you being serious? No, I'm being serious. Okay, I like that too. I like that because I, I think... I just don't like when they... Uh, Pigeonhole. When they deliberately restrict design space for for arbitrary reasons. Like, there's no reason that artifacts <clears throat> only can be colorless. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. So, kind of like Future Sight. You may play the top card of your library. So, basically like Future Sight. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its mana cost. So, you can... Basically, if you're at 18 life, you can just be like two drop, three drop, two drop, three drop. Yes. And then pay a bunch of life. And then you can sack taunt ten non-land permanents. Each opponent loses ten life. I, I think the I think I think the bottom end of that card is honestly even kind of irrelevant. Um, I don't think that's how you're gonna win the game with this. Card. Correct. But I think maybe like if you get them down to ten, then you right? Do it. But I mean, like, like it has to be non-land permanents as well, which mm -hmm. is not nothing. I sent you a deck list for this too. Okay, take it easy. Sorry, just take it easy. You want me to bring it back? Uh, do I think this card's playable? Yes. 100%. Do I think it is... I mean, it's 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 playable in a very specific deck. This isn't like a blue card that's just going to... You're just going to put it into random blue decks. Do you even Chupa... Chupa Ka, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that was worth more than $1, oh, Kerwin. Kerwin that was it. worth more than $1. He, he did it twice. Well, oh, okay. He donated twice for the same thing, so that's okay. <laughs> that makes sense. That's okay. This card... Go back. Hey, what are you doing, dude? Slow down. Take it easy. We were on the card for like three minutes. I just want to make sure we have enough time. I don't want to have to. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, we need to hurry. Listen, I actually think this card is really good in, in, in mid-range style decks too. So I think like in a in like a Golgari list or something like that, this is just pure card advantage in those kind of decks. Like, so if you're playing Wild Growth Rockers and you're playing Jade Light Rangers oh, and you're sure. playing Merfolk Branch Walkers, like, like that's I'll just pay, value. I'll pay two, two, two life to play a and Merfolk Branch three. Walker and then gain three. Yeah. And then you can manipulate the top of your library because you're taking lands off the top because, you know, once you hit your second land, you're stuck on this. I like the options for this. I like thinking, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't think it strictly has to be a combo card. It doesn't no, have to be. I don't think be. so. Yeah. B Bond of Revival. Five mana. Return target creature from a battle from the from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Getting the haste is cool. I hate reanimation spells that only do it from your graveyard. That's just a pet peeve of mine. I want to be able to kill their creature and get it back. Just like having clones that only target your own stuff. Correct. Yeah, I hate that. Because the best part is, like, it, it makes the cards so narrow. Like, oh, none of my creatures have died. So... Uh, dark, dark. Citadel has an incorrectly conjugated verb. Oh, uh, you know, I'm pretty much you cast a spell with my life. What is it? Is it? I don't see anything incorrect. The only thing people have complained about is boluses. If it should have an S on the end of it. <clears throat> cast a spell with my pay life equal to its converted mana cost. Shouldn't it be paying its mana cost? Paying its mana cost? Interesting. It's converted mana cost rather than. No, no, no. I don't think that's no. I don't think that's correct. I think no. I don't. I don't think that's correct either. I think. I think the way it's referring to. I think it's like because it's past present tense. tense or it's, yeah, paying would be past tense. It's present tense. Yeah. Instead of pay, pay. You're paying life equal to its. If it said. Yeah, no, it's, I think that's correct. I understand why why you think that way, right. but it's, I, I think it's, it's correct. Yeah, it's Charity Extractor, 4 mana for a 1-5 with lifelink. All right. Command the Dread Horde, 6 mana. Choose any number of target creatures and or Planeswalker cards in graveyards. I will choose two of my Planeswalkers and one creature. Command the Dread Horde deals damage to you equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Put them onto the battlefield Ooh, under your... That's steep cost. I'll take, like, I'll take 11, and it costs 6 mana, too. I like. know, that's steep. It's like a six mana reanimate, basically. I'm like, I all right, I'll reanimate my gross up and take nine. It's like, it's literally reanimate, but yeah. for multiple creatures and for six mana. I could see this, like, I feel like this card may be borderline playable or like something that may like get people to build decks if this costs four, if this was two and two black, because the, the mana cost is huge. Six mana is a lot. Yeah. 
And it's only yours, right? Target creature and a planeswalker in graveyards. Well, it is in graveyards, which is just like reanimate. So basically, I'm, I'm still on point. I know how that. you feel about taking other people's stuff. Davriel, Rogue, Shadow Mage, two and a black uh, for a three man, three loyalty planeswalker. Target, target player, negative one. Target player discards a card. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, it deals two damage to them. So this is just, this is great. This is going to go in the, I think it's good. the rack decks for, for modern. Like, it's just a, it's just a solid card. I like it. I mean, negative one, you're going to make them discard three cards, and if it stays on board, you just get... I love the I love the art. Extra damage on <clears> the <throat> turn. Is this damage? Uh, deals deals damage. damage. Yeah, you're not, it's not life loss. That's interesting. Davriel, Sha Davriel's Shadow Fugue. How's your Shadow Fugue doing, by the way? Good? Strong. Four mana, target player discards two cards and loses two life. Deliver unto... <laughs> Just this is like, a weird card. Okay. <clears throat> Three mana, two and a black. Choose up to four target cards in your graveyard. I will choose land, land, planeswalker, planeswalker. If you control a bolus planeswalker, return those cards to your hand. So you get all four. Otherwise, an opponent chooses two of them. They will choose the two lands. Or no, they will choose the two planeswalkers. Leave the chosen cards in your graveyard and put the rest in your hand. This is such a weird card. It's Gifts Ungiven in the sense... But it's not a Gifts Ungiven because Gifts Ungiven lets you put things into the graveyard and you will always draw two. Uh, and the two you don't draw go into your graveyard, so you can actually take advantage of them, right? Um, whereas this, the only thing this does is give you the two worst cards and leaves the other two in the they just And they have to the already graveyard. be there. I mean, right. this, is, this is a weird card. It is a weird card, but it costs, it's three mana to draw two. So if you have four spells in your graveyard, you're always going to draw two spells. I don't think this card's, I think this card's good. If you have Bolas, you just draw four cards. Like, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. You don't like this card? What don't you like about it? I love the art. That's That's super cool art. I just I, this card's just weird. I don't think like this card reminds me of like mnemonic betrayal and um, like it reminds me of cards like that where they have these super cool effects where like oh it's like Yawgmoth's will but for their graveyard like this is just it. I don't think this is gonna come to anything. This this won't be. A it thing. doesn't have to. You're drawing two cards. I'm saying like you pay three mana, you get two cards. How in many your of hand. these are you putting in your deck? One, four, two or three. If you have two or less cards in your graveyard, you're drawing yeah, you're drawing zero. But if you have two or less cards in your graveyard when you play this, you're probably building your deck incorrectly or playing Magic the Gathering incorrectly. So, like, that's like saying if I have a five-mana creature and I have no lands in play, I can't cast it. Correct. But you're you're probably doing something wrong if that's the case. Soul Mike clearly scared of things he does not understand. Well, like, yeah, I mean, this is always going to this is always going to be a divin this is a divination at the worst, I think. You choose four of your best cards in your graveyard. If, if you have only, like, card draw spells and removal, and That's you relevant. choose four of them, you're going to draw two. That's relevant. If you happen to have a, a Nicobolus Planeswalker, <clears throat> you're drawing all four of them. That's relevant. For three mana. Yeah, that's relevant. I can see that. I understand that that thought process. Like, there's a reason it says Exile it, because if you could get these back and loop right. them, it's very strong. Strong. Dreadhorde Invasion. Two mana. Okay. Yeah. For an enchantment, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose a life at a mass one. So this is like a Bitter blossom -esque card. Whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains life link until end of turn. <coughs> the problem with this is that if you have a mass token, it's only putting a 1-1 one -one counter on it every turn. So you're going to take a damage and put a counter on, and you get a 2-2. Two -two. And then you're going to take a damage, and you're going to put a counter on, and get a 3-3. Three -three, and like, eh. I can see this being okay in, in a control mirror. That's it. Because it forces you to deal, forces them to deal with it. But they have Mortify anyways. I mean, maybe it's it just it, yeah, mortifies it really, a very strong. It really condition. pressures their the, the amount of mortifies they have in their deck. I don't know. I think this card is neat, but like unlike bitter, like it's just no bitter. It's, yeah, it's not even near that. I don't think it's near that at all. Dread Malkin one one for one with menace. Sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. Put two one one counters on a Dread Malkin in the right deck. That can be pretty okay. The creatures a one one menace for one is fine. Yeah. Uh, putting two counters on it is nice, especially because it's an instant. So mm -hmm. you can just be like, all right, you'll kill this guy. I'll put my counters on it. Yeah. Again, it's a little slow. Three mana is like the same thing I want to activate Kalidus with, but. Kalidus. Kalidus. Kalidus, get off the dang roof. <laughs> Dusk Mantle Operative. One and a black for a 2-2. Two, two. Dusk Mantle Operative can be blocked by creatures of power four or greater. That's cool. The Elder Spell. This is a big one. Could've black, black. Could have Could have been better? Yep. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Destroy any number of target planeswalkers. Your opponent has three planeswalkers. You kill all of them with Dead. one two-mana spell. Put two loyalty counters on it. Choose a planeswalker you control. Put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker destroyed this way. Um, I have seen countless people trying to brew with Nicobolus, uh, God, Dragon, and this card. Dude. And I think it's... 
I think it's legitimate. Like, this card's very powerful if your opponent's... Not. You can also kill two of your own Planeswalkers to put four counters on Nicol Bolas and just ultimate him. Like, I think this card is very strong. Even if this is a sideboard card, like, this is... For two mana, this kills any number of Planeswalkers. Like, if your opponent is playing any Super Friends deck, you're paying two mana to kill all of their all of their Planeswalkers. Like, yeah. that's, a, that's a big it, game. It could be a, a singleton sideboard card, maybe. I mean, I think there's very few decks in could, standard now yeah. that don't have Planeswalkers, and I think moving forward, it's going to be even even worse so i don't like i don't actually see like why like th this is just i think this is main deckable for sure main deckable no way Raskus contempt you, you that that's a dead card against like yeah maybe that's true yeah it's just that's, i think you do have better ways to do things yeah maybe that's true yeah, that's fair. I, I, I i could see the sideboard and i can also see a deck built tried to be built around it I could eternal see taskmaster eternal taskmaster and his butterfield tapped Whenever it attacks, you may pay three if you do return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This card's great. Um, because it's not returning a zombie card, it's returning any creature card. So this is a 2-3 two, for two, which is already ahead on stats. Yeah. The first time you attack with it, which will be on turn three, you can pay three mana to just return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. Like, you're just drawing a card. So, I don't know, I think this is great. Uh, wouldn't be happy to get this in limited. I think you were talking about the elder spell. I think it's actually fine in limited because limited is going to have a lot of planeswalkers. Yeah, actually. there's going to be a lot of uncommon planeswalkers. I think it's it actually like, okay. I think it's actually fine and not to mention it buffs all yours. Like it's even relevant against on your yeah. uncommon ones because it just gives you that many one one more activation. Right, because it's going to every one two you counters kill. for your planeswalker, yeah. which is always one activation on the uncommon guys. Yeah. It seems like um, very few are. Yeah, this ones. card seems great. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this. You'd think this would be like a, a zombie specific card, but I think it's just in generally. I think it's just generally good. Finale of Eternity, the black one. X, black, black. Destroy up to three target creatures with toughness X or less. Um, This card is not playable. It's not playable. Right, nope. right there. It's like, because if I want to kill a 5-5, five, five, it's seven mana. Yeah. And like, okay, cool. If you have three 5-5s, five, I can kill all of them. But I'm not usually in, in the market for that. Well, I want to kill your one 5-5, five, five, right? If X is 10 or more, so if I'm if I'm spending 12 again, return all creature cards from your rear. That, that part's cool, but like... 12? Maybe, maybe no. The ability itself is cool. Yeah, no, I the agree raid is unreasonable, yeah. but uh, it's I'm not about this. This card's this card's hot trash. This yeah, is this is this is terrible. It's not even good against like white weenie because you you just play the card that three mana neg two neg two. That's just a board sweeper. Yeah, like I mean, and that 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 only kills X ones. I mean, if I if they have a four four, I'm paying six mana, and I have to kill. I get I get to kill three of them, but like if they only have one, I don't care about that. Also, I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna pay 12 mana living death. Like that just seems terrible. Very bad. Uh, three black, black. Bantu has menace. He's a five six. So good rate. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of their permanents and draw that many cards. This 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 feels like one of the weaker ones. In the right deck, it's that. That's a super strong ability. Really. Sacrifice any number of permanents and draw that many cards. Yeah. And How many Norse... aristocrats are in standard right now? There. So now we got another one in this set. So there's actually three. There's three blood artists. So you could sacrifice currently. your whole board. There's three blood artists currently. I'm gonna get blown out by this in standard so easily. Like it's gonna be so fast. My first week of standard playing, I'm gonna get blown out by this, right? Mm -hmm. Like people are just gonna be like, "Hey, sack my, I'll sack eight permanents. You take 16." Hey, isn't there a creature in standard right now that when it dies, you return all lands to your graveyard from your graveyard? You to the return battlefield? all lands to your graveyard. Go to your, go back to the graveyard lands. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Huh. Anyway, this guy seems fine in the same vein that they're they're just generally good. Yeah. But I don't think this is one of the more exciting ones because I, it takes a lot of work. No, I, I agree that this is not... Whereas like, I feel like the other ones don't take as much work. Yeah. But anyway. Herald of the Dread... Her Her Herald... Harold. Like four mana for a 3-2 when it enters the, when it dies a mass 2. So this is basically the same as the guy who made a Saproling in uh, in Dominaria, right? 3-2. Except you're making a two-two. When this this is a four mana three 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 two. This is a good card. A two -two. It's a pretty good card in limited. It's fine. Oh, it's hundred percent. You'd hundred percent play this yeah. every time. Standard now. It's two creatures. Kaya's ghost form one enchant creature or planeswalker you control. When enchanted permanent dies or is put in exile, return that card to the battle. This should have flash. I agree with you. This um, should have flash. I, yeah, this is a card you've seen. We've seen this card a thousand times, and it's never super exciting. I don't think it's more exciting now for any reason. So I'm just gonna world shaper. Is the card is that in standard still? Yes. Because if that card's in standard, then you could sacrifice all your lands and it's world an shaper. It's a merfolk excellent. You could sacrifice everything, draw that many cards, and then get all your lands back immediately. I mean, yes. and you just drew ten cards. But how do you cast it? You tap your tap your lands for mana. So let's say you have oh. eight 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 lands. We well, right? have to have nine in play, right? Because it costs four and Bantu costs five, so you have to have 
nine mana that's well i'm saying if you have the world shaper in play already oh sure if you have your world shaper in play you sacrifice the world shaper yeah you you tap you tap five five six lands and then you sack everything whatever it's, I'm just saying, yeah, it's cool. It's cool, no, right, actually, right, but it's a yeah. lot. It's a lot of things. It's a lot to happen. No, it's, it's not real. Lazo tap. Yeah, because they can also just kill in response. They're like, mm-hmm. all right, we'll exile it. Uh, five, four, four, five. Zombie hippo. Zombie hippo. Lazo tap reaver. Who's One, Lazo tap? Have two. we seen Lazo tap? I don't know. It could just be the name of the clan or something, the zombie clan. When it enters the battlefield, a mass one. So it's a 1 2 and a 1 1 for 2. Sure. Woo! Liliana Dreadhorde General. When it when a creature you control dies, draw a card. Create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Each player sacrifices two creatures for negative four. And negative nine, each opponent chooses a permanent they control of each permanent type and sacrifice the rest. One key component is the static ability that says whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. That's insane. Card Card's are really good, this but card it's is six really good. mana. It doesn't matter. Liliana the Veil is also six mana. I do like the neg four. Or not Liliana the Veil, uh, Elspeth Sun's champion. I do like I the, neg, the, the neg four. Oh, yeah, because especially if you sacrifice any of your cards, you draw, draw two cards, yeah. and then you just kill well, two, draw one or two Yeah, yeah that's, that's really good. Uh, there's a lot of situations in standard where if you're playing black, sacrificing two creatures it is It doesn't say non-token either, no, which is relevant. Anything. That's take... pretty good. The, the, the And she takes up to seven on her first yeah. on our first uh, turn. That's like, this, this card's good. nuts. Pretty good. This card is fantastic. You're going to be playing this a lot. Yeah. This card is nuts. <clears throat> Liliana's Triumph. This is, yes, this is also an upgrade. <laughs> So this, is a di- this is a strictly up- a better Diabolic Edict. This is so good. Uh, one and a black. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control a Lily on a Planeswalker, each opponent also discards a card. So we now have instant speed. Uh, draw, draw, no, draw step. Draw step, discard your card. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. If you, yeah, if you control a Lily on they have wow. no cards and you're just like, I'm thinking about draw this step, I'll make you discard in eternal formats. And sack your guy. That card's great. This card's sick, girl. too. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four with Menace. When she enters the battlefield, each other creature gets a negative one, negative one. Whenever a creature died this turn, repeat it, basically. Each other creature each creature other than Massacre wor- Girl gets negative one, negative one. This so, cr- you almost said worm, which is funny. I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> so, like, basically, you're going to go negative one, negative one. If they have a one, one, it dies. Another negative one, negative one happens. If they have a two, two, and then and that dies. Another negative one, negative one, and awesome. that dies. And she'll never, she'll basically never die from this. This effect. card's awesome. So she just basically keeps killing a bunch of things. Great card to pod for. There's a card in Hearthstone called Defile, which has a very similar effect to this, where it's like it deals one damage to everything. If a creature dies, repeat it. So, yep, Defile exactly. Um, yeah, this card's good. Hey, Supernova, what's up? Obnixilis the Hate Twisted. Uh, five mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Obnixilis deals one damage to that player. Which this is just a fine ability on board. That was the ultimate. Destroy target creature. Its controller draws two cards. Oh, his ultimate was two damage. Oh, was it? Yeah. That's just better. Destroy target creature. Its controller draws two cards. This is a weird card to evaluate. I don't ever want to kill their creature with and this. And let them draw two cards. Yeah, that's... Never. I oof. mean, like, it'll they'll take two damage, but you're drawing two cards. I, I'll pass. However, if you're able to kill, like, your own creatures, like, if you have, like, a token or something to draw two, like, I think all of that's fine. I don't, I don't know. I don't think this is playable. I think five is a little expensive for this effect. There's other cre- there's other effects that let you draw cards when your creatures die. You don't have to d- invest five mana. Obnixilis' Cruelty, three mana. Target creature gets neg five, neg five until end of turn. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. I card's think this card's good. good. Yeah. Neg five, neg five is going to kill most things you want. Yeah. Uh, it still doesn't kill and the exile. gods, unfortunately. Nope. Um, I mean, it does, it but buries temporarily, them. sure. Uh, for three mana. Mm-hmm. And this card's still great, though. I think this is still very good. Yeah. Very good removal spell. Price of Betrayal. One black. Remove up to five counters from target artifact, creature, planeswalker, or an opponent. Wait. Interesting. You can remove poison counters from your opponent. Yeah. You can remove energy counters. That's, oh. That's interesting. Wait. Was it called? Was it? Yeah, it was called an energy counter. What, was it called an energy counter? Yeah, they're energy counters. Interesting. Hmm. This also could just kill a planeswalker. Remove five counters from a planeswalker. Or is, yeah, this is actually this is interesting. This could be a one mana planeswalker removal spell, but I mean it also doesn't do anything as creatures. For that, I'd play. For that, I'd I'd just pay two mana and just d- destroy them right away. I'll destroy them right away. Right away. Uh, two and a black for a two one flyer. It gains haste until end of turn. Cool. Soren's thirst. Two damage and gain two life. This card's fine. And no, it's not. It's not. And what? Con- I cut you off. I, I was rude. I'm you sorry. You think this is fine and constructed? No. Why wouldn't you just play Moment of Craving? Because I forgot it existed. Okay. That doesn't make this card not fine, though. I mean, just because there's a better option right now. I think, like, Moment of sure. Craving will rotate before this does because it's an Ixalan. And this will still be around. I think this could see play at that moment of Craving. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, the point is the card itself is not bad just because there is a better option. Now a good card. 
I like this card uh, a lot. Spark Harvest, one black. As initial cost, to cast a spell, sack a creature or pay four, destroy a creature or planeswalker. It's just better bone splitters. This is great. Oh, it is definitely better bone splitters because you can, not only do you not have to sacrifice a creature, you can also uh, destroy pay four and you can also destroy a planeswalker. Yeah, yeah, this I like is, this card a lot. This is a lot of value here. Yeah, I like <clears> this card for one mana. That's really good. Or you just pay five. Yeah. And just kill their thing. Sure. Yeah, this card's good. Yeah. Spark Reaper. This guy seems a lot stronger than he probably is. Three mana for a 2-3. He looks pretty big. Sacrifice a creature or Planeswalker. You gain a life and draw a card. It's, it's not a bad ability. That's kind of an uncommon ability. It's too ability. expensive. It is too expensive for sure. I mean, I'm going to play it in limited for sure. A 2-3 for 3 that yeah. I could draw cards from. Yeah, definitely. Tie the Bearer Giant. Six mana for a 4-5. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose a life. This is just a Phyrexian like Gargantuan or mm -hmm. uh, Phyrexian Reaper Rager. Rager? Phyrexian Reaper Rager. <laughs> God dang it. Toll of the Invasion. Three mana. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Amass one. So this is basically just coercion, except you get a 1-1. One, one. This one, is actually yeah. not terrible. Three mana, you choose a card and get a 1-1. One, one. This is actually fine. <clears throat> I don't think this card's bad at all. Mm. Okay, well, you It's too expensive. It. Three mana? Yeah. The one ones are relevant. One and a black. Target creature gets plus two, plus oh, and gains indestructible. This one's fine. Combat trick. No one will ever ride me again, Gideon. Expect no further favors. <laughs> that's a good That's a good flavor. Uh, vampire Opportunist. One and a black for a two one. Each opponent loses six, and you gain two. This is just a, a finisher in limited. Two-headed so giant. It's an old 4-4. Four, four. Vizier of the Scorpion. Three mana for a one one. When Vizier of the Scorpion enters the battlefield, amass one. So it's a 1-1 one, one with a 1-1. One, one. Zombie tokens you control of Death Touch, also relevant, which is why this is kind of like a lord. It sucks, though, because it says zombie tokens, which stinks, right? Because when you have a mass, it's it. just one. Right. Right. That's right, right. Anyway, Vraska's <clears throat> finisher, three mana free, three, <clears throat> two. When it enters the battlefield, destroy a creature or planeswalker and opponent controls that was the damage system. You don't like this? No. You can you don't like poke in their planeswalker with your 1-1 one, one and then just playing this for as three, as a 3-2 three, for three? No. Killing it? Mm-mm. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's it's nice because you can attack planeswalkers with it, uh, which is a lot easier to deal damage to than other creatures. Like a creature has to choose to block, whereas you can choose to just attack the um, planeswalker. <clears throat> yeah, just choose the planeswalker. I think this is actually fine. Um, if you have a, a one one or a two two, you can kill any planeswalker with it. So Vraska's finisher sounds like a WWE move. <laughs> 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 All right. Firemind Vessel. Four mana. Enters the battlefield tapped. Add two mana of different colors. Unless you're able to sacrifice this for some cards, I'm not really excited. Four mana is way too expensive for if a If this costs... Yeah, but you can't price it at three because then you're in Warm Power Stone territory. No, I agree with that. So it's, it's really an awkward position, but you just need to add something to it. Like, Hedron Archive was great because you could add two mana or you could just sack it to draw two cards mm -hmm. at some point. And, like, I think that was really where you wanted to be. The two colors is nice because it helps me cast Niv Mizzet Reborn. But, I mean... Whatever. God Pharaoh's statue. Six mana. Spells your opponent's cast. Costs two more to cast. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. This does a lot of things. Now, oh, it's actually... For some reason, I thought this was a, like a 4-4 four, four flyer or something. No, I'm not, I don't see this ever being played. People were saying that they, <clears throat> this may be what they start dropping on turn six in Tron. But I still don't think really? that that's great. Yeah, people, I, I read that online. You mean with six mana, not on turn six? No, well, turn three, I meant. Right. <laughs> turn three, and then <laughs> turn, they just play, three. A, they play a chromatic. L London Mulligan well. rule. You only need four cards, dude. Anyway. Guild Globe, two mana. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. I like this card. Sacrifice it, add two mana of different colors. I like this card. This just replaces itself. This it, is This nice. is a prophetic prism almost. Uh, very similar, yeah. It's more like but, it's, but, it's literally a Terrarion, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, diff um, terrarion costs one. Shh, okay, yeah. And well, Terrarion costs one, and also you didn't get the card when you cast it to Terrarion. When you get, yeah. got it when you went to the graveyard, right? Iron Bully, three mana for a 1-1 one, one with Menace. Iron Boopy. When it enters battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. This is either 2-2 two, two for three or a 1-1 one, one that gives another creature a 1-1. One, one. Not not super exciting. Yeah, God of Pharaoh's Stature or Worm Coil Engine. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the Worm Coil Engine. I feel like this is a bad... I like the art is super sweet, but I feel like it's a bad depiction of Karn. Karn, the Great Creator, for four mana for a five loyalty Planeswalker. Second four mana Karn we've seen in two or three sets activated abilities of artifacts your opponents control can't be activated that's pretty strong plus one until your next turn up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost okay <clears throat> you got me that's fine <clears throat> you may choose an artifact card you own from outside the game or an exile or reveal that card and put it into your hand that's that's pretty good 
I think this card's great. <clears throat> I don't so, know if it's busted for four mana, but I think it's is pretty not, strong. This is not a busted card, first of all. So I think this card is super cool. In, this, in the context of standard, it's kind of useless and i'll tell you why oh, i think i i don't think it's a standard card for any, for anything right so i it's i think it's literally it's it, in standard it's useless there's nothing there's no artifacts that i care about shutting get, off right and there's no artifacts i care about searching there's, for there's one artifact that i that i think would be great to search for but unfortunately that artifact also shuts off my karn and that's the, the immortal, immortal sun, sun right yeah so yeah. this card in standard I, I want it to be cool and work but also the plus one if you look at playable artifacts there's nothing bigger than like a three three so you you turn an artifact into into a uh, a three three that they can now kill. So I, I don't think this card's great in standard. Now outside it's obviously. Can <clears throat> I mean I would one hundred percent in standard. I would one hundred percent play the other uh, mm -hmm. the card. other card over mm -hmm. this, right? Yeah. <coughs> yes, we're all aware of Michael Synth Lattice. Tell me more about my Lord and Savior, Michael Synth Lattice. <laughs> mana Geode, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. Add a mana of any color. This is fine. He can draw the other cards that are. I exiled. mean, this is just. I, would I play this over Chromatic Lantern? I don't no. Think so. No way. But on the same hand, like sometimes all you need is one one mana of any color. Like you, all you need is one source to produce a mana of any color to fix your mana, right? Like you'll have everything else, and you just need that one flexible mana. And like being able to scry one is nice. But I can see why. I mean, Chronic Lantern is still better. Just scry one, I just think is, is very nice. Mm. Prismite. This is what I used to call you, old Pris Prismite. Old Prismite. Two one for two. Add a mana of any color. Oh. Healy's Silverwing. Four mana for a 2-3. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top card of target opponent's library. So weird. All right. Well, that's a that's a thing. Ugin the Ineffable. Six mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. Exile. Exile. Well, color spells you, call, you cast cost two less to cast. So that's that's cool. Play this in Tron now. Mm -hmm. Plus one. Exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2-2 two, two color spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exiled card in your hand. Wow, that seems great. Mm-hmm. So you get a 2-2, two, two, and if they kill the 2-2, two, two, you just draw a card? Yeah. This card's Negative great. 3, destroy a permanent that's one or more colors. Oh, wow. This card is fantastic. Yeah, this card's awesome. I'm a fan of this. Dude. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's playable outside of standard, but I think in standard, this is a super <clears throat> strong card. I guess we'll see, buddy. We will find out together. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, I'm a. I'm a big up. On, I'm a big thumbs up on this guy. This card seems great. This card's sick. I like this card a lot. Plus, the next turn, you can play Karn for 2 mana. That's cool. Yep. Ugin's Conjurant. X mana for an a zero zero when it enters with obviously X one one counters. If damage would be dealt to it while it has a one one counter, prevent the damage and remove that many. This is interesting. This is very judgment ability. This is like the counter ability of judgment, like where whenever they were dealt damage, you yeah, just remove a counter. There are creatures. Better than endless one. <clears throat> uh Blast Zone. <clears throat> this card's very interesting. Enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it. You can add tap it's add a colorless. You alright? You want a little No, I'm good. Okay. No, actually, I catch the side of it sometimes, and it messes with me. So I'm actually, I don't want Oh, you want one less? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, X, X, and a tap. Put X charge counters on Blast Zones. For four mana, you put two charge counters. Three and a tap. You sacrifice it. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Blast Zones. This zone. is an engineered explosive on a land. This card's... <clears throat> it's really good. Really good. One of the main problems is that it's it's, it's difficult to destroy tokens with it. Um, you If you have a way to remove a counter from it, you can do that. Um, but it's it's not naturally it's it's very difficult to do and uh, rack. but the fact is you can't uh, it doesn't come into play tapped which is huge yeah, right yeah like, it adds mana it, it ETBs adds mana right so it's just literally a land you can play in your deck that just has just kills creatures that is really good against mono blue and standard you're right you just put it, yeah it just comes into play on one ETB and then you and pay you're like all right I'll kill your curious obsession your siren storm tamer and all your one one unblockable yeah, it's pretty good yeah it's very good for a land it's just a land that does that that's pretty sweet I think this actually will see play in um. It's a land. Mo it no, no, no. In, in, your modern, in modern, in uh, amulet. I like you said, no, no, no. Like, but no, it is a land. I wasn't. Oh, you're right. It is. I know. I take it back. Emer <laughs> emergence zone. Add a colorless. One in a tap. Sacrifice emergence zone. You may cast spells this turn as though they had flash. Look, all those cards we wanted to have flash. We can. All we have to flash. do is sack our land and add two mana to it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's not good. It's not. This is this is this is Gateway Plaza is fine, but I also think this is some of the coolest Gateway Plaza art yeah, of all the sick. Gateway Plazas that we've seen. Yeah, so. That's sick. Uh, Interplanar Beacon. Whenever you cast a Planeswalker spell, you gain a life. I think this is actually very good. Add a colorless, or you can tap one and it to add two different mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast Planeswalker spells. If there's a Super Friends deck, this card is awesome. Like, if you have multiples, two or three of these, you cast two or three Planeswalkers, you're getting like four to eight life, which is just nuts. Like, this is a lot of, that's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of life. Relevant text. It's a lot of relevant text. Including, including that it's mana of different colors. Right. Yeah, I think this card's good, and you're just going to put it in your mana base. Like, if this didn't fix for Planeswalkers, I think it'd be one thing, but the fact that you can add two colors is great. Mm -hmm. Karn's Bastion. 
Add one and then four and attack for proliferate. I'm playing this land. This card is also this great. This is going in my deck. You guys said we didn't value proliferate, but like the fact that this is just on a land is just great. Like yeah. you just I don't have, really think it's that great. You just have a well, it's I mean it's really good in the decks that want it. Like sure. I if agree you're playing that. a bunch of planeswalkers, like there's no there's no cost. You're not taking there's no up, cost, you're, not, right. you're not you're not taking up. You're not taking space. a spell slot, right? Yeah. You're just tapping four, yeah. putting a counter on three different planeswalkers. This card's cool. Mobilized district, which I believe is the last uh the last land. And um Add one, four, another four, another four minute activation cost. It becomes a three, three with vigilance until end of turn. It's still a land. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature and planeswalker you control. So if you have four planeswalkers or legendary creatures, uh, it's just free to activate. This is, is a pretty good land. Cool. It's not, again, it's a, it's a, just a land that you can put in your deck and do, do stupid, cool things. Like that's really cool. Um, well, I mean, considering this is a rare, you're probably not going to have to worry about how high you pick it. Like, I mean, it's, you're either going to get it or you're not. <laughs> like, I think. Uh, I don't know if I'd pick it too highly I don't because think it is I'd colorless. Pick that pack one, two, or three. Like, <clears throat> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pick it super highly. Yeah. That's like a, if it's pack three and you're already like four or five planeswalkers deep. That's different. But yeah, those are those are those have been the uh, white, blue, black artifacts and lands. Definitely let us know what you guys think in the comments. We're gonna the next part is going to have green, red, and multicolor cards, and we'll be uh, right back to do those. So definitely uh, slam those like and subscribe buttons. You can check me out on CoolStuffInc.com. You can uh, use promo code Frank Five to get 5% off your purchase. You can also check out manatraders.com. The link and the promo code are going to be in the description below. You'll get 20% off your first three months of any subscription on manatraders.com. And you can also check out meundies.com slash Frank Lepore. Uh, and you'll get 15% off along with free shipping and free returns. So thank you guys for watching this set review. Definitely let us know in the comments what you guys think of your, of the cards, uh, what your favorite cards are, any cards we might have underrated, any cards we might have overrated. Um... <clears throat> No, you cannot activate this twice to make it a 6-6. Six, six. It becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, it doesn't become a 0-0 zero, zero that gets plus 3, plus 3, or something like that. Like, no. Uh -uh. Activating something more doesn't actually double the power and toughness. Nope. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you for part two. And uh, slam those like and subscribe buttons. Ciao.